seven fourths.
साहब America Day. Been flying my freak flag seven days a week for the past nine months and plan to keep it going. but I think it might have got lost so she sent you another hope it made it to you. P.S. She loves your reacts man. What's going on, everybody? Hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, afternoon, pre-noon. No matter where you are in the world, I'm Sam Piker, and this is Austin Abbey is coming to you live box, from sunny California, Los Angeles. Folks, we are live and alive. And I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one. Okay, it's 74 degrees and sunny out here in beautiful California, Los Angeles. And it's Sunday, July 4th, the 4th of July, 2021, 11, 10 a.m. 
and I am right on time. And this is actually a super Nine months. Going special, the baby super secret, spectacular Sunday stream. Now, the reason why I say it's a super special, super secret one is because I literally did not think I would be going live this morning until, I don't know, the mood hit me and I wanted to, I wanted to stream because I knew that I was yes, uh, key, EI. not going to be able to, uh, you know, for the rest of the day today because I am, of course, uh, going to be, um, doing a little bit. No, no, no. There is a stream on Monday. I'm just going to be, um, you know, partying for the rest Happy of the day. So that's why. When is this dreams cheating confession brief cameo at the end Un uncovering the truth by Carl Jobs? I'm going to be extremely grill pilled today, folks. Extremely grill pilled. This is going to be a short stream. 12 months and you've helped change my life. Okay. Has I just felt like I just felt like I absolutely needed to do a PO box. You know, and fuck around a little bit for a couple hours and just chill. You know? Since a lot of people probably are, uh, you know, I don't even know if, uh, I don't even know if people are going out today. I don't know what the fuck everybody's doing. Um, you know, you don't have to actually uh, celebrate or appreciate the 4th of July, obviously, but uh, you can still grill, baby, with some friends. Are you an extrovert? Yes. Love. Yes. Republican rapper from the 90s, happy 4th, brother. Let's go. They canceled my town's fireworks? Bro, it's like it's gender reveals is just like destroying the fucking planet so i guess maybe that's why sonic is a patriot what is this here's the most cursed fourth of july video ever made enjoy you know what i kind of want to look at some of the worst fucking fourth of july shit Pass. i thought p.o box was closed so i didn't send anything no it's not it's open it never closed they just stopped sending me messages like when packages were coming in because i had not Because I had not uh, paid. I forgot to pay. Set Have you decided on a character for Russ yet? Thing. No. When is the rice gun basketball thing? Uh, I don't know. I don't even know if I'm going to do it, to be honest. I saw an awesome fireworks show on a last night. Yeah. I've Thank never so been like a fireworks guy. I, I just... I appreciate you. In the summers, I used to visit my uh, grandparents when they lived in New Jersey. And like... 4th of July was a big deal. Like, my grandma always, always wanted us to go look at the fucking fireworks. And I just, like, never... I was never into it. It was not something that I was into at all. Ocean Man, take me by the hand. Lead me to the land that you understand. Dot Ocean Man, the voyage to the corner of the globe is a real trip. Dot Ocean Man, the crust of a tan man imbibed by the sand. Dot soaking up the thirst of the land. Thank you for that. So, um, anyway, I, uh, ended the stream yesterday. As you guys know, this is part of the broadcast where I tell you about my personal news. I ended the stream. I started watching, uh, I started watching Clone Wars, the Star Wars, uh, animated show. I think they originally did not have it serialized. I think they were just like making the show for kids. And then they realized like adults are really into it because, you know, you know how fucking adults in Star Wars are. So then they serialized it. So I'm just like getting into it right now. It's not bad. Then uh, my friends came over. My friend Dan finally fucking brought my uh, 
brought my sad eye phone case so I no longer have to use a uh, goddamn the and one phone case you know you need to watch in the serialized order for it to make good sense well regardless um not getting the communist uh china case that's not a that's not a case that's an actual full-blown uh phone why do you think it's good the clone wars I, I i have no opinion on it yet i just started anyway um yeah we'll look at some like cringe ass uh independence day hyper patriotic bullshit in a little bit what i was gonna say is uh my friends came over we drank a little bit then i went out and uh we went out to a uh nightclub actually but obviously like i couldn't be out too long because i was gonna wake up early as fuck as i did and train in the morning which i did um but it was really interesting like I, I feel like back in the day when i used to go out i mean maybe it's in my head maybe it's an insecurity right but back in the day when i used to go out like and you know i'm at a table with some promoter friends like most of the girls that are at that table would flock to me in some way shape or form or like be interested and try to talk you know try to like make up reasons to talk to me and whatever and i no longer feel that anymore i, I feel like it's like i've lost my mojo i don't know if it's because i'm old i don't know what the fuck it is but i feel like uh i have lost my mojo and the only lost your clout no it's not clout at all no 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 because the second part of the story is that as soon as my um as soon as one of the promoters was like do you know who that is or like as soon as uh any of the girls were like what's your instagram then it changed like that so it's like do you really think any of us are gonna give you sympathy dude look at you you're hot as fuck well now it's like it's clout time i think it's like clout that works maybe because you hang out with us probably true and uh it was kind of it was kind of sad like i mean it's not like they weren't interested maybe it's in my head i don't know You weren't talking about communism enough? Hey man, you live in LA, gonna be a lot of girls like that? Don't sweat it, dude, I know, I know, but you know, it just doesn't feel real it, it, when it's like, when it's uh, clout related, you know what I mean? But who knows? Sad you lost your game because you spend way too much time with chat honestly probably the truth um but you know here i am once again anyway i am going to tweet out that i'm live day carries open for a super special spectacular secret Sunday broadcast patriotic gone in parentheses gone patriot gone patriotic edition we're looking at mega cringe Fourth of July vids from hogs and also I will be doing a PO box opening 
Get in now. Don't miss it. www.twitch.tv slash Asanami. There it is. That's a good one. All right, go blast this one out, boys, because uh, we only got 12,000 people in here, you know? It's like, it's over. Dead streamer. Fucking dead streamer, dude. Did Mike from PA just raid me? Hey, Central Committee, thank you for the raid. Hey, someone found your getter? What? Need a bad bitch to do crack with? Mm -mm, need mommy, dommy. Mm -mm. Fuck my fucking cock and balls, John. Piss off. I love women so much, man. And then John also said, fuck off with that gay shit. That's crazy that he said that to me. Wait, is this actually like... Did someone just like make a getter and they're just posting as me or something? Or, well, not me, but like fuckboy me, I guess. Have you noticed any major changes with people being less willing to talk strangers in public since COVID? Uh, not really. America, Milena uses a flamethrower and MP lol. Damn, weather in Texas is dog shit, dude. Is it like rainy? Then what? You need to respond. Then you attach it. Attach it? And then what? <laughs> Milena. Yeah? Up, All right. Just send it. On, you, off. You turn the, the gas on. Huh? <laughs> Just, what which the gas? The gas. This? Yep, you turn it on. And then what? Tell me what to do after that. So I don't you press it. the lighting button. This? No. Aren't you supposed to let it air out? You press this button down here. That? Yep. Yep, like and then that? you give it gas and you, then you pull the trigger. Yep. Oh! Okay, oh. all right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Melina! How do I stop it? Stop, stop, stop! I don't know how to stop it! Turn, turn off the gas, you idiot! I did! Off! It was off. America! Okay. Woo! Woo. Wait, you have to be in it! I feel like flamethrowers are just not good as a weapon. You know what I mean? You have to be in it. <laughs> Too right. costly. It's got very little Guys, range. Like it's got destructive stop. power for stop. sure, but I got it. The I, I got it. I got it. July song. Are I got you in the it. USA? Oh, we, should not we have we have seventeenth of May song. What? Do what? Why? Sing it. Wait, the Star Spangled Banner? Yeah, it's played on trumpet. Okay. <laughs> it is so hot. Flamethrowers were designed to clear out trenches in World War One. Yeah, I, I know. How Trump supporters took the U.S. Capitol, dude. I can't watch this. It's a forty-minute video. The speed of heat transference is also an issue. Wait, there is actually a getter page for me. With fucking 300 followers already. Hassan, I'd be more like socialist. This motherfucker is spitting. Wait, how does this have a check? Or is that not like... Yeah, because I'll be too busy laughing at the two-inch annihilator. I'm literally seven feet tall. You need to reconnect with your father and learn to love him instead, brother. Number one virgin. Marjorie Stan, notice me, Hassan. How about you notice how much you've fallen? It's sad. Hassan, can I see your mommy milkers? How about you let some mommies milk you, brother? You have not seen a woman in 10 years. I want to debate Stephen Benelli the spaghetti tomorrow on the merits of sexual interactions with fictional beings. Who is writing this? Like, I, I want to know who the fuck is just, like, using this as their burner. Wait, what the fuck? Is this actually Jay Schlatt? 
Is this just a platform where everybody just has fake accounts? Jay Schlatt says America deserved 9-11. What is happening? That's kind of, this is just all very strange to me. Okay. Very, very strange to me. This is the only flag I celebrate, brother. Oh, dude, hold on. I'm going to show you the flag I celebrate. I found it. <laughs> the Nicki Minaj. Wow. What a, what a beautiful flag this is, dude. That's, that's America, baby. So it seems like Getter is just like every other dumbass, like, Twitter competitor app. It's just Parlor 2.0. But with more shit posts. Is the PO box still open? Yes, dude. It's still fucking open, dude. God damn. Some of you are just like, dude, I need to send you stuff. You need to have this. It's open. Okay. The source code got hacked pretty quick, too. That's nice. Okay. Um, wait, what was I going to do? What was I going to say? Uh, I'm fucking forgetting. God damn it. What was I talking about before? Oh, yeah. Um, anyway, I woke up early. I worked out. And uh, I am pretty fucking tired but as always i feel good that i actually ended up working out so without further ado i think we should get into some first i just want to say happy independence day you sexy americans big dick biden is ready to show his sexual liberties with a bang this fourth drink a cold one grab your sister's ass and celebrate the freedom daddy washington brought 1776 years ago New York Times is fine for the most part. High screen when it gets to the part where it covers a woman getting shot, though. Don't think that's safe for stream. I don't know why cowards don't want to admit that this. I now understand why you're so smart. Hassan's degree. Oh, Senpai Sauce is back with stupid shit. Don't be fake. Huh? Yeah, yeah, we are waiting. Where'd you get your degree, Costco? You your mom's house. The spirit of I justice. fucked her. You love your father. There it is. He's back. Senpai Sauce is back with absolute bangers, dude. Thanks. Thanks, Senpai Sauce. Okay. The New York Times video is really well, well done, but it's kind of sleeper. We're not going to watch that today regardless. Okay. So, let's take a look at some 4th of July the videos. The stars of four kids. And now, the stars of four kids will sing the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light. So fucking cringe, dude. I'm sorry. The Star Spangled Banner is so ass cheeks. It's not moving. It's not even good. It literally doesn't even fucking slap. It's pathetic, dude. We need to change it. We actually need to change it. It's kind of... It's kind of sad that, like, America, which is supposed to be, like, the greatest hog nation on the planet, doesn't even have, like, a good-ass fucking... Like, a good-ass national anthem, you know what I mean? It's really nice that where I live, if you have a flag, you're basically a Nazi. Wait, what? What do you mean? Oh, are you German? Is that why you're saying that? Light. What so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming. Who's brought strike? Bro, they were 
they were teaching our children furry shit like way back in the day. I wasn't even aware of this, dude. I was not even aware of this. I would have stopped this if I if I had the opportunity. I take a knee in my house when the national anthem comes on for sports. Oh, dude, you're so sick. Sick, dude. That's fucking brave. I mean, that's literally just the opposite of like standing up and putting your hand on your heart. You know what I mean? Oh, say does that. The only time you should take a knee for the national anthem is if you are in direct proximity. If you're like doing it as a protest, a predetermined protest is like, you know, at a big event or whatever. Or if you're in close proximity of conservatives, that will get very upset. That's the only reason. Otherwise, just fucking sit down. Like, who gives a shit? That star spangled banner yet way on the land of the <laughs> Hey, yo, turn that shit up, Charles. Kind of weird seeing like Gummy Boy from fucking One Piece over here sing the national anthem along with like furries. Why don't we just go back to Afghanistan then? Um, one, because Americans destroyed it. And two, I'm much happier here fucking your mom every night. Okay. No one gave a fuck about politics back then. It was so good. So that was one. He said, imagine getting triggered by a word. These people are going to die to my fart. That's kind of funny. At the Republican convention, it's called, and, and he wrote this, he wrote this, it's called, We Are Americans. We're going to hear it. We're going to hear it. Okay, play it, and, and here we go. Here we go. America, America, God shed his on the Break it down. Here we go. Yeah, boy. We are American. Come on, say it. We are American. Some black, some white. Some black, some white. Some red, some brown. But all American. Yeah. Listen up, listen up. We are Americans. Yeah, check us out. Listen up. This is reverse racism. I just don't understand. Like, like what? What happened? Like, just black conservatives blow my mind, dude. It's just like. I'm an American. Just like always zero fucking drip. Like uh, for a group of individuals who exclusively claim that they're conservative because like they're black and conservative because they're not a fucking monolith. Like, oh, everybody says the plantation is a democratic party. I'm leaving the plantation. I'm not a monolith. Black conservatives literally just always are absolutely fucking dripless. No flow, no style, 
no swag just so sad red blooded one bonafide citizen and i'm proud to be called a republican because i love this nation i'm born in yeah that's right i'm a black man and i'll fight for the truth that i must defend because i love this country that i'm fuck yeah dude yo this guy's fucking sick he's one of the good ones bro fuck yeah he lets me say the n-word let's go moving <laughs> in are you with me, my countrymen? Listen up, we're gonna win. We are oh, yeah, play it with me, come on. We are, we are American. Yes, we some black, some black, some black. The debate continues next. This guy won Bush that election, to be honest. Change the anthem to this land is your land, but keep the parts that reference how private property is theft. What? You you sent me a jib jab. You just sent me a jib jab video from 2008, dude. Are you crazy? Are you fucking crazy, dude? Jib jab. Meanwhile, back in the city. All sang and see. By the dawn's early light. That's so proudly we hail. At the twilight's last beaming. These broad stripes and bright stars. Through the perilous fight. Over the red hearts we watch. We're so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare. The bombs bursting in air. Gave proof to the night. Our flag. We're still there. Today, does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free? And the whole of the brave. That was whatever. Wait, POTUS said America is back together? Sir, my barbecue costs 16 cents less. Thank you. Good job. That's funny. Dude, people are... I mean, this is it. Can we listen to the anthem, the USSR anthem? Black Hammer Org is going to make a new national anthem, Pog. They're grifters, so it's just like not going to work. Top 10 national anthem fails from Watch Mojo, Mo Omega Lol, Joe Omega Lol. Can I get in trouble for not standing during the pledge at school? Dude, I don't fucking know. Probably. We are a, uh, we are a proto-fascist nation. So, it was what you're hiding under that hat. Your mother's pussy is what I'm hiding under that hat. My hair is wet because I just took a shower, which is why I'm wearing a hat. I do it every fucking day. And people always make it seem like this is, a, you know, a big real, or a big real, big secret that I'm, like, hiding under my hat. That, like, I don't have hair or something. I do. I'm just... <sighs> Anyway, my friend and I would not stand all the time when we were in high school. No trouble, really, but everyone hates you. No, you can't First Amendment, really? You gay dog, because if so, respect. so weird that we like that you're you do a pledge of allegiance every morning or some shit oh 
say, can you see? These are the horrific remixes of America's most patriotic tune. I can't watch this. Like, this is... It's going to be too cringe. Like, 13 minutes of just hearing the same song over and over again? I I'll fucking lose my mind. You know? You realize you're making hair loss worse by shitting on it with a hat? What? Dude, I don't care, dude. I don't care. I already take fucking Propecia. All right? It's fine. Just Welcome find to WatchMojo.com. And today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 U.S. National Anthem performance fails. Well, so hell is well. Always go on. Where is the Fergie one? Whether it's a lyrical mishap or a vocal disaster, performers understand. Bro, this has 21 million views. What's so Twilight's last gleam Whose bright stripes and bright stars Through the perilous fight O'er oh, the ramparts we watched Were so gay Here it comes. And the rocket's red glass, the bombs burst, in air. Gave this is literally not as bad as I remember it. Did I just like, did I have a Bernstein Bears moment where I just like actually thought this was a lot worse? This is the moment where the glasses start breaking. It's like they're showered with, uh, they're just showered with glass from the top of the fucking. And the Basketball court. Okay, dude. Watch Lady Gaga one? No, I don't want to watch this. Also, the redneck cringe shit, like, I don't know what's going on here. Is this like 4th of July fails or what's the deal? Just straight up just cringe rednecks? I don't care about that. Uh, the coolest videos were the Tornoto finishes the U.S. anthem after the speaker's break or whatever. The Tornoto? What the hell is a Tornoto? My man said... My man said Tornoto's coming. Okay, I kind of want to watch the rest of this. Rapper TRQ hot seat with Wally George. Now, I, I want you to get to bring on with. There he is. 
Okay, okay. so he rapped. We watched this already. This guy we are proud to have on the show. Now, you have been in, you were in, invited to perform at the Republican National Convention. Isn't that a great thing? Yeah. Isn't that a great thing? Yeah. Now, how did that all, all come about, TRQ? Uh, Wally, I got to tell you something. You know, uh, in this country, we've been bashed for the past uh, 36 years since the Democrats have been in power. Right, the Republicans have. Uh, the Democrats have been dominating the House. Right. And they've been bashing the Republicans. And I think they've been bashing America. Yeah, right on. Right on. And I, as, first of all, I have to say it's an honor to be here on your show. Thank you. It's nice to know that there's a conservative voice out there besides Rush Limbaugh's out there telling okay. people how to do yeah. that. Bro, Rush Limbaugh was popping off even back then. It's crazy. He's just this is the guy who's TRQ unwrapping the unknown rapper. He's a virgin. He loves his president, and he's a rapper, kind of. Although he's never made a record and has rarely performed outside church. He's Stephen Gooden, aka TRQ. The right question. He's a textbook example of how one person can send the media chasing. A conservative Christian from Van Nuys, Gooden quit his job as a legal file clerk. August 6th to handle media calls full time since agreeing to perform at a pre convention Republican youth rally tonight in Houston. His rap song, We Are Americans, touches on abortion, welfare, family values, and other issues dear to the expected crowd of 2,000 young Republicans. When you quit your job to sing the 2,000 racist. That's awesome, dude. Good in 28 has made no record. And his performances have been pretty much confined to the Granada Hills Community Church. After the controversy over Ice T's Cop Killer album, Good in contact the GOP and offered his services as a young black conservative. Of course he did. Of course he did, dude. Hold up. Let's let's find this song, dude. TRQ. What is it? We are Americans. His his rap song that blew up, I guess. Is this guy still relevant? No, of course not, dude. He wasn't even relevant back then. Wow, dude, you can't even find, you actually can't even find the video of him rapping We Are Americans. The song that he rapped on the show? Well, the problem with that song that he rapped on the show was that it was very short. I didn't even realize it was like a full song. When the GOP Youth Committee asked Gooden to perform, Gooden says he called a Southern California newspaper, which ran a story about the rapper. Arsenio Hall seized on the story and asked his audience if anyone have heard of TRQ, a rapper supporting Bush. Hall said sarcastically after the Hall show, the media calls came pouring in. I mean, yeah, this is... Remember, guys. Remember how I always... Why? Remember how I used to always tell you, like, and I still do to this day that conservatives and, and their grifts have never changed. Like they completely just conservatives just recycle their same grifts over and over again. It's the exact same. That's it's just the GOP has never changed. How do you feel about the same people who say I'll die before I let someone disrespect my flag, but wear the most horrendous full American flag outfits? Unironically, yeah, they're fucking dumb. Well, that's the whole point of conservatism, right? Never changing. That's true. Okay, let's watch. No notification. Fucking goddamn it! Wait, really, dude? Dude, you're actually wrong. Who freed the slaves again? I forgot. Yeah, the ones who weren't enslaving, I guess. 
Do you want a fucking cookie, dude? You racist baboon. You're like... What the fuck? Who freed the slaves again? You think conservatives freed the slaves, you dumbass? It was the Republican Party, which was not the conservatives at the time. Also, I find it really weird whenever, whenever people are like, who freed the slaves? Like, okay, sick. Who also enslaved them? And if they're really racist, they'll say black people enslaved uh, black people and then white, fe white people freed them. That's like, that's the mega mind of racism right there. That's like, you need to do phrenology at that point to like analyze this person's skull density because it's too good. His skull is just like, his skull measurements are, are through the roof, dude. I love when people don't act like the party switch. Here's the problem, okay? Fuck the party switch. Like, you don't have to acknowledge the party switch to recognize that it's Republicans that defend Confederate statues and monuments to the Confederacy and wear Confederate garb, whether they're in fucking, you know, South Carolina or Ohio, which blows my mind, uh, and wave the Confederate flag while going out and voting for the Republicans. It makes no sense unless you recognize that, like, no, they're conservative, and they were conservative, and they're voting for the conservatives. You know, the Confederacy, which was conservative. All right, let's watch this fucking 4th of July video. Oh! Independence Day! Everyone's just here for the whole day, just, you know, drink day beers, seltzers, whatever it is, shotgun beers. Oh, gotta love Trump. He loves money. He's good with money. Everything about money. What, what's your favorite way to spend money? Favorite way to spend money? Beers? Beers, favorite way to spend money. Happy 4th of July. Boy, I think we're about to do some body shots real quick with the Truly. Bro, this was literally, this was like peak COVID, by the way. You already watched this? I know, I'm watching it Fuck again. Fuck the brake fluid. We sitting fucking straight gas over here. And I got some gas for you later too, Andrew, for real. Okay, so I was going to bring my mask. It's in the car. My mask is in the car. I snorted salt, did tequila, and I rubbed the limes in my eyes. And you bang your head on the fucking table. Hit me up on the fucking gram. Okay, Salt, tequila, oh. hit your head on the table. Brick wall in front of us, we ain't slowing down. It's all gas, no break. My thing with alcohol is no matter what I'm drinking, it could be top shop shelf tequila, it's gonna get me fucked up. Or I could drink $5 vodka, and that's gonna do the same exact effect. That'll cure Corona. It's an amazing day right here in Marquette, Michigan. My name's Mark. No, this is old, man. This is old as fuck. This is from last year. This is literally from last year. Why are people losing their minds? Like, we're just rewatching. Party, it. but around here, I go by Party Marty. This is Broccoli A, and that's all I can really offer. <laughs> what are you most passionate about in life? Uh, cocaine, bad bitches, and alcohol. Cocaine, alcohol, and bad bitches? Way cooler than coronavirus. White Claw is life. It just speaks to the soul, you know? How do you feel? Don't listen to what the fuck she said. Cocaine, bad bitches, and alcohol is way cooler. Do you guys know each other? Yeah, this she's is... one of my bad bitches from Marquette. Yeah, this is one of my good friends. What's your guys' favorite memory together? I've ate her ass like 10 times. Oh my god, hold on! <laughs> We're state champions. Bro, that's crazy, dude. I mean, okay. Like, we've talked about different class builds before. But, like, white man is such an OP build. Like, this guy ate her ass, okay? My man's name is Holden. Like, you know that's, like, this is just, like, a rich Michigan kid straight up all the way. Like, how the fuck? Like, that makes no sense. Like, that physically does not enter my fucking brain. Like, I cannot comprehend that. But it should also give most of you hope. Ten times, he must have been really good at ass eating. Ten times. Oh my god, hold on! We're state champions, 2019. 18. 18? State champions! 
to be fair though, that's like he's like a hard eight in the Midwest. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Someone already said he's a Michigan nine. Hassan, you don't get it. Straight up. Exactly. He's like Champions! He's what a is Michigan that on your chest eight. right there. The upper peninsula Michigan. What does it mean to be from the upper peninsula of Michigan? Great. I ain't really from here. I'm from Baltimore, Maryland, but I came up here for the med plan program for both at the Northern Michigan University. And I'll tell you, from what I've met, these guys are so much more friendlier than Baltimore. You know, crab cakes and all that type of shit. I wish they had it up here, but it's still a good ass time coming up here. And I appreciate it. I wish our flag had more recognition, but they don't give it. They say our flag is terrible. Independence Day! I live across the street. My name is Tim Trito. This is the craziest this beach has ever been in my whole life. Right? Oh my God, dude. I remember being very creeped out by this when we first saw this, but like, I mean, it's still creepy. It's actually still creepy. A bunch of teenagers down the street ran over there, you know? Get my dick wet. Get my wee wee wet. What I wanted to do. Right in the midst of a pandemic. All these people come up and they're coming from all, people from Florida, people from all over the country, Texas. You watch, I think we're gonna see a spark in Marquette. I mean, you see where we are, we're not going down into that craziness. Does anyone actually know someone with it? Any of you guys know someone with coronavirus? I fucking don't. So it might be a lie. Detroit rappers don't get corona, dude, because they drink lean. Is that literally the cure? So I'm in a nursing major and all that shit. Coronavirus is 100% real, but who gives a fuck right now? That's Do you have it? Buddy. Fuck no. Do you know someone with it? Bro, he said, he said, I'm a nursing major, dude. Yo, perhaps there is perhaps no better example that like a college education is just fucking bullshit then like when you hear motherfuckers who are like you know i'm econ i took econ 101 dude capitalism is poggers hey uh i'm a i'm a nursing major dude there's motherfuckers that have it i don't well, know you don't know anyone with this that's my nurse dog i'm gonna die <laughs> yeah so it might be a lie a little bit of them have it, but we're gonna get through it. We're, you know, a strong, united country. I don't really like America. It kind of sucks. Black Lives Matter. <laughs> That's awesome. I just know that his dad is an artist, so I know he got into art, and every time we go to a beach, he does this stuff, and uh, I swear he's a chick magnet because of this. I am Evan Burke, MCAT, the Sandcastle chick magnet. <laughs> My dad's an artist. He taught me how to do this shit. I know there's a lot of controversy going on and shit, but we're still American, you know what I mean? It's July 4th. Independence Day, and we all shit the same color at the end of the day. We're all equal. We're out here deep. We're gonna you know what? We all bleed the same color is true, and it's one thing. But my man said we shit the same color, and I feel like that is not true at all, dude. We definitely do not shit the same. I don't even shit the same color from day to day. You know what I mean? Sometimes you eat something weird. All of a sudden, you're not even shitting the same color. We're gonna get Andrew a kill tonight. You understand me? He might have a little two for one, three for one. Who knows? Andrew got it going tonight. Shotgun truly to you, Phil, truly, ruly. We're gonna get you a kill and it's gonna be unruly. We're getting Andrew a kill. Fuck the bars. You just have to say who you are, Andrew. You'll get fucking kills tonight. Kills tonight, bro. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you kidding me, Andrew? You really don't think you can get kills tonight? Seriously. There are birds waiting for you to hunt. You just gotta say I'm full send, bro. You got the fucking camera and shit? Like, are you kidding me? So you I got go, it. I'm full send. Can I kill you? Hey. No. That's, 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 no, no, no. That's some other shit. Like, I'm full send. Can I kill you? No. Say, hey, look. Hey, I'm Andrew. Let me get a fucking kill. Shocked or unshocked, bitch? How you want it? This is the most Midwestern man on the planet, dude. My man has a fucking corn tat. Shocked, bitch? How you want it? You got a dart or no? What's that mean? <laughs> dart. <laughs> That's Jake Paul. Ohio represent. Shouts out to Ohio. Shouts out to the top of the hour. Ad break coming in hot right now. You know, it's for 60 seconds. It's the first ad break of the day. You already know what the deal is. Shouts out to the ones who don't want to see the ads anymore. So they subscribe. They can do that for $5.
or you can do it for free with a Twitch Prime. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can do it with a with a fucking ad block or a VPN too. Those are those are different ways that you could do that. I know that one lacked effort, but what are you gonna do? Here's a fucking ad break now. Or, you know, running that one minute ad break. I don't have a dart. Fuck. Yeah. Fucking no darting, bro. This is God's country, the 906. That's God's area code. Everyone, please vote. If you don't vote, what are you doing? Over 240,000 on TikTok. TV. I love TikTok. 240,000 on TikTok. Oh, there's a lot of issues going on in the world right now. To over 200 fucking, yep. how many? You got a key? She got over 240,000 though. 236,000 followers. 200,040 followers. Bro, this dude is subs getting ads. I don't know why. How does that feel? But it feels good because I can promote things that are actually going on in the world right now. What do you care about? I care about everything. I think about. I care about everything that's going on in the world. Right now. Didn't they fucking bully? Didn't they bully her on TikTok? Cause she was out and about partying on Fourth of July, even though she was like claiming to care about the world and shit. Three issues. Top three issues. Well, definitely COVID is one of the biggest things right now. Two hundred forty thousand on TikTok. If people have a social media following, they should be promoting what they think should be going on in the country. And I think right now, kind of funny. Just like I'm, I'm remembering my mentality watching this last year at the fucking peak of the pandemic. And then I'm thinking about it now, like one year later, and we are. One year later, and we are here, you know? Fourth of July again. Things are getting better. Feels good. Feels fucking good, man. Here, still in our houses. I mean, it's acceptable to do this. I'm literally going to do this. I'm going to do this in a little bit. Her face was not blurred last time we watched this. Wait, really? Everybody should be fighting for what should be going on. If you're fighting for the wrong reasons, then why fight? Because there's a lot of issues going on in the world right now. And if you're not fighting for the right reasons, then why be out here? Listen, how many people do you plan on saving today? <laughs> Someone usually drowns on 4th of July. But what about dying from the other thing? From, like, heat stroke? No, the other thing. What other thing? What's up? Out here from the 309. I'm Pat Riley. We're out here doing Marquette shit, and wasted. Beep, 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 back it up. You know what I'm saying? Bro, dude, this is scuff Daniel Radcliffe, dude. More like Daniel Asscliff. What's that mean? The dump trucks. The big booty bitches. Yeah? That's, yeah. I see that rock? I was just on that rock. I've been on that rock before. You, it's all about jumping off big rocks. Uh, the sunscreen. Uh, to be honest, I don't think anything's on anyone's mind out here. No one's really thinking about, you know, the shit that's going on. I don't know. Shit, well, anything else you want to say to the country? Uh, if I had a harmonica, I'd be ripping that shit, dude. I'd oh, yeah. rip the harmonica. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes! No brakes! Appreciate you, Doug. Hell yeah. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Go get him. <laughs> Fuck yeah. That's just amazing. It's an old video, yeah. It's from last year. Those are the people that do believe COVID, by the way. That's the funniest part. Like, they do believe COVID, but they're like, ah, what are you going to do? You know what I mean? They're like, yeah, COVID's real, but also at the same time, like, are you really going to fuck the vibes that hard, you know? There's a new the middle ground from Jubilee down. on the American military spending. I don't know if I want to watch that, though. I think for the 4th of July, we need to revisit America's heroes, the Hoff twins. If you're at an event and Andrew shows up, you're probably in the wrong place. I mean, considering the reality that I've gotten Andrew to show up at an event, you're absolutely right. You are literally correct. Uh, I took him to the QAnon rally last time, so I really got to do more stuff with him. 
the worst thing the worst thing about andrew's videos are that they're too short like i wish they were like 30 minutes long you know what i mean i always want more he got chet did you catch that yeah he can do that i can't even though i'm wearing a white boy summer shirt this chat really does cuck its own content a lot if we're being real like like when chet hanks reached out to me i was gonna have him on and then everyone was like dude he's like a fucking wife beater abuser racist the fuck are you doing fuck you you're a wife beater abuser racist by proxy if you have him on the show like you know so i was just like all right i guess i'm not gonna have it it's kind of the same with like playing basketball no one said that no people did fucking say that what are you talking about see i but why would you have him on there you go people are still saying that And it's like, <laughs> I love that while someone is saying no one said that, there's people literally saying it. Like, literally one person gaslighting chat. Yeah, Chet Hanks reached out to me months ago, and then I, I talked about it. And, uh... I talked about it in the, on the stream and everybody got mad at me and we're like, why the fuck would you have that? Like, why would you do that? Well, it's your stream. What are your own principles on who you would have and who you would not have on stream? I mean, see, there you go. I think you made the right choice not having him on. Yeah, but we're going to sit around and watch Andrew interview him with like fucking drool coming out of our mouths. So, you know what I mean? Like, that's the whole point. We like to talk about like, uh, you know, don't platform problematic people, but then you're also like literally excited. You get your dick hard to watch uh, a friend of mine uh, who I suggested interview uh, Chet instead. You know, um, honestly, it's getting really hard to defend you, man. I mean, honestly, frankly, I'm gonna keep it a bug. I hope you're having a good day. Thanks. Chat loves that degree of separation so they can still criticize us all they know. Yeah, I know. Gonna talk about how WBS was taken over by the alt right. What? I can't tell if this dude is trolling or not. Gooch Gooch the Clown, probably trolling, right? Like, White Boy Summer was overtaken by the alt right. What is the alt right, bro? They don't have any fucking power and they have nothing now. Like, who took it over? The fucking three remaining groipers, dude? Is that what they did? It's not 2016 anymore, okay? They're incredibly irrelevant, except for, I guess, your fantasies, where you think about them all the time. Most wasn't the friends I lost in combat, it was the friends we kept losing. Robert Evans did a long article on it? Oh, shit, dude. If he made a long article on it, I guess that's, uh, then, okay, I guess they did take it over. After. It takes its toll. All right, let's watch this middle ground. What made you join the military? <laughs> I made a lot of bad choices when I was in high school. 
and I needed something that would give me an opportunity and a chance. So when I was a kid, there was a Marine that lived around the corner from me, and he stood tall and erect. He was just so proud. From that day on, I knew I wanted to be a Marine. I personally would not recommend my own children enlist in the military. I just feel like there's a lot of variables that could go wrong, and I'm not entirely confident that the Yo, this dude literally looks like he's a part of JROTC. Like... This dude is giving out, you're, you're disrespecting a future Marine energy right now, okay? Government would take care of them post-service. Some unfair judgments that I've really seen is uh, in the civilian sector. When you come out, uh, there's a lot of things that you're taught in the military within your communication that could be viewed as aggressive. A lot of people assume that you're crazy or that you have PTSD, that there's something wrong with you. It's some sort of ticking time bomb that walks around is just not the case or that we're all bloodthirsty savages. We're not against anybody. We're not for anybody. We're, we are truly of the people, by the people, and for the people. Talk about critical racism theory. Kind of racist, dude. What is kind of racist? Your mom? I know. I'm trying to fuck the hate out of her, though. And got him. That's all I'm going to say. Going forward, I'm never going to take uh, these idiotic takes seriously. I'm just going to say I had sexual intercourse with your mother and she enjoyed it and move on. Hey guys, what's up? I'm Danny Sharp, Army, eight years. Uh, I'm Dave. I'm a retired Marine from about four or five decades ago. Maybe you can't tell by looking at me. I was in the Marine Corps for 20 years, and uh, I worked for the VA afterwards and a couple of other jobs, and here I am. My name is Mahadi, and I was in the U.S. Army for four years. My name is Peter. I've been in the U.S. Army, uh, active duty, and the reserves for 22 years. What's up, fellas? How are we? My name's Elliot. I served in the Marine Corps for four years. The first prompt is... I enlisted at 18 years old. Come forward if that's true for you. I enlisted at 18 because, honestly, college really wasn't an option for me. Um, I wasn't exactly the most intelligent high school student. I failed m m numerous classes. I knew that I wanted to be a Marine from a young age. So as soon as- I can't believe they had Chris Dorner on for this. It's kind of, you know, it's kind of con controversial, to be honest, but uh, bold of Jubilee to go there. You know what I mean? You really can't corner him. I mean, you can, you can see that right here. Crazy. As I graduated high school, literally five days after I graduated high school, I was on the Yellow Footprints in boot camp. Yeah, I can relate to that. I left two weeks after I graduated high school. Um, but I had a less than normal childhood, we'll say. Racist? I mean, Dorner is also, I think, a Marine Corps veteran. And kind of looks like him, so. So, uh, the military was a way that it would offer me a, uh, you know, a chance to have a stable adult life once I, um, once I progress after the military, too. I was looking to get away. You know, I grew up in here in the South Bay Area. I had a fairly comfortable life, graduated at 17, but they picked me up from my 18th birthday party, and my first day of being 18 was spent at uh, Fort Leonard Wood in processing wow. at basic, so. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, you know, one hell of an 18th birthday present, you know? Welcome to boot, we're shaving your head. <laughs> yeah, people be like, damn, dude, I can't believe you're doing sex work. You're selling your body for money? Uh, that's terrible. And then turn around and sell their bodies to the fucking US government, dude. So my story is actually a little different. I enlisted with the Navy when I was 17, and then I failed out of high school. The Marine Corps took me as far as MCRD, and then they found a heart murmur, and I got sent home. I pissed away a year of my life making awful choices, and one day woke up uh, and walked downstairs uh, where my father was waiting in the dining room, and I said, if I don't join the Army, or the Air Force. I am going to end up face down in a ditch probably in a couple of weeks because I have nothing. And a couple of weeks later, I raised my right hand and they gave me some waivers and I joined. And I was 19 when I enlisted and I turned 20 in basic training. Wow. Oh. 
I think the beginning of my military was like yours. I had gotten kicked out of high school or dropped from the academic roles because of not passing. Bro, there's like, there's a couple different types of people who join the military. Let me give you my completely fucking uh, non-personal take that is going to trigger a bunch of people, but most veterans and most uh, active service, active duty people will agree. Okay. You have the dudes that come from broken homes and like shit ass backgrounds who want to fucking run away from their families. Uh, a lot of times that's partnered up with predatory practices, uh, predatory recruitment practices, and also a uh, Camaro that you can potentially buy. Okay. That you can purchase. Then you have the military family guys who are also ironically oftentimes coming from shitty backgrounds as well. Or they're doing it because, like, everyone in their fucking family is military, okay? They're like, well, my dad was military, my, you know, grandfather was military, I'm gonna fucking be military. And then you have the real freaks, okay? The officer, like, ROTC program Andes that, like, literally fast-track into becoming an officer. All the other, like, uh, all the other uh, kids who enlisted at 18 fucking hate them. And all those psychos then turn around and go and, you know, get a fucking MBA at Harvard. And then before you know it, they're Tom Cotton talk, walking around talking about how, you know, we must, we need to actually destroy everyone who says they are Democratic Party members, you know. Actually, I don't even know if, I don't even, yes, I watched Jack Reacher too. What the fuck is Jack Reacher? Um... But uh, I don't even know if Tom Cotton was an officer, but usually. Yeah, and then they go and, and fucking work at McKinsey and then become a politician, okay? That's, that's, the, that's the three broad, uh, like, military, uh, American military backgrounds that you get. Passing three academic subjects, which they told us. And so now I'm in Philadelphia walking the street. Active duty military here, pretty accurate. You're missing that I joined the serve my country types. Yeah, but that type is dying. And I don't mean literally. I mean, like, this type no longer exists as much. And the reason for that is because 9-11 is a distant memory. And 18-year-olds don't know 9-11. So they don't give a shit. You know what I mean? The, I, I joined the serve my country types. There's a lot of you in here that literally did that. Okay. There's a lot of you, there's a lot of you who probably did that. There's like active, there's, uh, you know, people who fucking toured, shit like that. Post 9-11, enlistment went up. Like they fucking, enlistment skyrocketed. Everybody was trying to join the military because they were whipped up in like this religious, almost religious fervor to defend America from our enemies, both domestic and foreign. Um, but uh, that type doesn't, exist anymore which is why like the american military has like increased the predatory recruitment practices by trying to fucking lock you in at the age of 14 with like a you know finals mouse or whatever the fuck those things are called with you know sweepstakes and shit like that but like no one gives a shit anymore about the american military Like, they don't care. Americans don't care. They just don't. It's just the job. It's the job. It's a shitty job. You act like you give a fuck. You do this, okay? You go, oh my God, I love our vets. But in real life, it's just like no one cares. Like, absolutely zero people care. It's, uh, it, these are wars that uh, are young, are fighting, uh, that are slated to never end. Terrible. It's devastating. Like, the, the whole purpose is that the war has to go on forever so that the American military industrial complex can continue making money. Streets by myself, no friends. And I went down to the recruiter and uh, he said, you got to get your parents' consent because you're only 17. He gave me the paperwork, so I took it home and my father signed right away. And so I was off to the Marine Corps at 17. And I got out and I stayed out for a little over a year and I went back again and I did three more years and I got out again. I must not have been happy. <laughs> Maybe I was confused. <laughs> I came back in after that 
Well, see, that's more of the point. You kept coming back for more. <laughs> There's something special about being a part of an organization where we all went through the same crucibles, you guys literally, right? Yeah. and instantly have a bond with them that we just don't have with other people. My military experience has affected my mental health. Coming out of the military, regardless of the experience you've been through, I mean, I don't know who else has been operated within combat zones, but... You're a piece of shit. People are literally willing to die for you to say shit takes like that. What the fuck is wrong with you? Says underscore Austin. Yeah, dude, you're totally right. It's so funny, though, that, like, the vets in here agree with me, but you, random chatter, J-R-O-T-C Andy over here, are like, people are willing to die for you. Hey, man. Can you explain to me as easily as you can, as quickly as you can, how killing a pedophile goat herder in Afghanistan is going to defend my liberties? Or how that same pedophile goat herder was ever going to impact my free speech in any meaningful capacity? Please explain that, okay? Giving like bags and bags of cash to random pedophile warlords in Afghanistan is not uh, defending my free speech, okay? Not happening. Nice job strawmanning his argument, lol. That is not a strawman argument. These people are willing to die for you doesn't mean anything. Just because someone says they're willing to die for you doesn't mean that like what they're ultimately doing is legitimately defending uh legitimately defending think... like my rights or my liberties, okay? Do you have any idea what the special forces do like SEAL teams, MARSOC, Rangers, and Airborne Division do? Sorry. Yes, you're right. Murdering an American asset and then blowing up a million dollar fucking helicopter in the process is what one of the wonderful things that the SEAL teams does. You know, murdering an American CIA asset that is literally one block down from uh, the the... Pakistani, like, uh, fucking military complex, uh, jerking off to hentai playing, uh, Nintendo 64, uh, murdering that guy and blowing up a helicopter in the process is what the SEAL teams, uh, do. Or, uh, massacres in general. Some of you should probably talk to veterans who have a better understanding of the things that they did. Okay? Maybe it will open your perspective. Actually, you know what? I'll play one of my favorite videos of all time. Okay? Friend of the show. Abby Martin's boyfriend slash husband, I guess. Or I don't know if they're married or not. Mike Prisner. Prisner. Here. Don't listen to me. You're a veteran's take on it. Okay, how about that? What the fuck? Susan Brothers, thanks everyone for being here. He was arrested outside the White House with 130 other uh, veterans from the Iraq War. Susan Brothers, thanks everyone for being here. We're from the organization March Forward. We are here to say to all those serving in the Army, in the Marines, in the Air Force, in the Navy, that you have the absolute right to refuse to take part in these criminal wars. And that's a right that all of you should exercise. You have no reason to go put your life on the line and kill and die for profit. We've been to Iraq. We've been to Afghanistan. And we know what these wars are really about. And we joined the military for many reasons. Because we need a college education. Because we need a job because we need health care. And then we join the military, and they tell us that our enemies are poor people in caves in Afghanistan. 
or poor people in the deserts of Iraq. But we've been to those countries and we know that our enemies are not other poor people abroad or any of the people that laid us off from our jobs, that denied us health care, that make it impossible to get an education. Our enemies are not in the poorest countries on the planet, but right here in the richest one. The occupations of Iraq and Afghanistan alone are costing over $700 million every single day. This is a crime every single day while so many of us are hurting. Well, I think all of us here and the vast majority of people in this country would agree that we can spend $700 million a day better than bombing people that we have no reason to bomb. We can spend $700 million a day rebuilding those countries we've destroyed. We can spend $700 million a day caring for the veterans we get home when they get home, and then we can spend $700 million a day giving every single person health care, a college education, a job, and a livelihood, and a home. That's what we need to be spending our money on. But this government is not going to do that. They're not going to use the money in that way. They're not going to end the wars. And they're not going to do it because it's not our government. It's their government. It's the government of the rich. It's the government of Wall Street, of the oil giants, of the defense contractors. It's their government and the only language that they understand is shutting down business as usual. And that's what we're doing here today. And we're going to continue to do until these wars are over. It's crystal clear now that these wars are going to continue and expand and go into other countries. That is the trend. That is what we know, that there is perpetual war. And it's only going to stop if the people stand up and stop it. And that's what we're going to do, sisters and brothers. A lot of people ask me, what do we do? Because we all know things are bad. We all see the atrocities on TV. We read about it. We experience it. Steve always asks, what do I do? Because we always want to know what to do. Do we vote? Do we support a politician? Uh, what, you know, do we join an organization? What do we do? Well, I'll tell you what we do. It's simple. We fight. We fight and we fight and we fight and we shut down our workplaces, we shut down our schools, we shut down the streets, we shut down business as usual, and we fight until we force the people in there to do what the people out here want. Because that's how we're gonna get around and we're gonna fight until there's not one more bomb drop, not one more bullet fired, not one more co a soldier coming home in a wheelchair, not one more family slaughtered, not one more day of U.S. imperialism. Let's fight to make that happen. We can do it today and in the days ahead. We have to fight to end these wars and create a better world, sisters and brothers. You know what's funny? <laughs> they, so they arrested him after this. So this dude, you know, put his life on the line to defend our free speech, brother. And then got arrested for exercising it. Okay. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Anyway. So. You know. The, uh, the DOD is the world's largest hiring body. Okay. Followed by sometimes the Chinese military and followed by uh, Walmart. They switch off. But the, but the Department of Defense is like, like the Pentagon is the largest single organize it uh, or, or organization that hires the most people wait did this guy get banned or something what happened hey pega do you have any idea what the special forces do hey what's up dude what happened i i i just we haven't heard from this guy since i mean i know it's like i know it's like a sock account but maybe he switched off it to his main i, I don't know what happened you know what the special forces do yeah dude <sighs> 
thing that people don't realize is they look at PTSD, they look at the trauma that we face and that we see in those types of environments, but they don't understand the emotional take that you, that you go through as you just basically transition out of the military and you lose a real part of yourself, that family, that mm -hmm. connection. Being that you're still in, yeah. how do you adapt to having to deal with mental illness while still being in the military now? When I answered this question of I agree with the military, has, military service has affected my mental health. I mean that in both a positive and a negative way. The sudden absence of regimentation when I left active duty and joined the reserves was so stark and so difficult for me to deal with that I, I quite literally fell apart. I lost my father in 2009, had a deployment immediately afterwards. The crazy thing is, is that the deployment's what saved me. Now, there's a positive side to this. Of course. I don't feel at any point that it's completely hopeless. There's, al I, there's always a fight that can be won. Yeah, the thing that honestly has gotten me the, the most has been, I didn't realize what I experienced in Iraq would have such a powerful impact on my life. One of the things that I went through was my CO got killed in Iraq. And I unfortunately was not on that patrol. So I think about it all the time. And every Memorial Day, I think about it. Every Veterans Day, I think about it. And I'm thinking about my situation. Like, I can't believe that only one deployment did all this to me. I came home with PTSD, anxiety, depression, hyper awareness. It's just a whole laundry list of issues. And I was able to find my calling in the music industry. And now I'm able to take the platform that I've been given and inspire other people. It's mental, emotional, physical, spiritual strength and endurance that gets us through. I mean, you're not alone. I've been there. Yeah. I've, I've got survivor's guilt as well. But you know what got me the most? The thing that broke me down the most wasn't the friends I lost in combat, it was the friends we kept losing after. It takes its toll. First of all, I consider myself very fortunate that um, because of my service, I didn't experience any kind of significant mental health challenges. Uh, but because of my job, I saw a lot of people that did, uh, whether they were coming back from deployment um, and just messed up by the hell of war, or even the issues that we have stateside when we have suicide, murders, sexual assault, things like that. They're all affecting the mental health of the force currently. I find that I have been extremely concerned and helpful for veterans that I know are running that Veterans Administration gauntlet to benefits. I don't know if that's, if I was affected, my mental health was affected because I have this really desire to want to help guys and women through this VA gauntlet that they have to go through, which is a maze to them. You know, we have a lot of veterans, like our culture in the military is like, hey, just tough it out. Suck it up. Yep. Suck it Suck up, it out. you right. know. Yeah. Um, Take a that knee, we... drink water, <laughs> face yeah. out, yeah. full yeah. security. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that we kind of carry that into the civilian world and now, you know, we're trying to shift the culture where it's like, hey, yeah. ask for help. You know, it's, it's not a sign of weakness to ask for help, you know. I have felt sympathy for those we've fought. Our business that we have had, the titles that we have held, have been a business of trying to prevent the loss of life by causing the loss of life. It is a difficult choice to make to pull the trigger. It's the hardest trigger pull that you'll ever feel in your entire life is to pull that trigger with someone on the other end. I could not do my job as a leader in today's army, if I was not able to see the person on the other end of my rifle as a human being. We try to train each and every soldier, Marine, Airman, and Sailor, that a target is only a silhouette to take away that shock value, to take away that burden of responsibility of what you're about to do. But the inability to sympathize with another human being would make our job impossible. If someone is hurt, if someone is wounded, if someone is injured, if someone is sick, if someone needs to give birth, and they are not wearing an American flag, 
we will still render that because we have to have that sympathy. We have to have that empathy. Bro, but like also at the same time, why are they hurt? Like, why are they hurt? Why are they in need of medical attention? Just think. It's not like... It's not like they randomly fell down the stairs and you happen to be there and now you're there to help. Like, they're in need of medical attention because, you know, they either got shot by other homies in your battalion or... You know, a bomb fucking exploded over their house. Or we can't continue. We just can't. Our ethics and our humanity are the only things that really keep us intact when we're there and allow us to come back into the civilian sector and still be human beings. We're dealing with anxiety. We're dealing with depression. But for the first time that I've seen, you have men and women that have the capacity and compassion for themselves to reach out for help, to talk about these events, to bring awareness. Yeah, Elliot, I'm gonna put you on the spot. You lost your CO. Yeah. And that hurts. I lost some friends. When they took him from you, what was the initial response? Did you feel the way that I felt, that hate and that rage? Immediately when we got the call on the radio about the IED that exploded under his Humvee and killed him, I wanted to grab my rifle and run to where they were and just unload. That anger sat in me for a while. Looking back now, I'm able to understand more about maybe why they did what they did. Culture, society, and I understand that that is what was the driving force behind what they were doing. I think we're all privileged to live in the United States and we have a broader view of how the world works around us. Mm -hmm. They may not. And their idea of good is much different from our idea of good. I remember being in Iraq, going on foot patrols, and I would have sympathy for the, the civilians, the citizens of Iraq, of Ramadi, because they would ask us for basic things like water, soccer mm. balls, you know, things that we take advantage of every single day here. And I was sitting there walking around with my rifle on patrol thinking, these people don't have these basic necessities. They can't get food. They can't get water. They don't have, the kids don't have toys to play with. That must suck. Yeah. And to, to think if I was, if this was my country, if I'm, in, if I'm in Los Angeles, California and a foreign force invades, what am I gonna do? What, what would I do? And you're damn right that I would probably be on the other end of that, I would be the terrorist. I would be the insurgent trying to protect my homeland and my way of life because this is how I grew up. And I don't know who these people are and they're trying to impose their will on me and I don't want it. Right. Mm -hmm. You can you at know, least sympathize with the lives that are upended yes. because of this conflict. Of course. You know, when we talk about the civilians that have to deal with this, you know, especially in the situation that you talked about where right. they, yeah. you know, don't have what we have. You know, like I immigrated from a country where refrigeration was a luxury. Right. You know? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, it, there's more involved than just, you know, the yeah. A side and B side. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course. Drone warfare scares me. I give up, I can't make everyone have respect for people who die or who are willing to for us, especially politically ignorant. Dude. Listen. You can recognize that the American military is incredibly exploitative and it's basically a poor person's draft in many respects. There's a lot of middle class people and upper middle class people that join as well. But most people join because they want to fucking get a free college degree and all these other amenities that other fucking... Uh, all these other amenities that other comparable OECD nations provide for all of their citizens unconditionally. But you have to recognize, no matter what you say, that what you are repeating here is just jingoistic American exceptionalist propaganda that you have been fed hook, line, and sinker that you're repeating in this chat over and over again while simultaneously considering other people politically ignorant. You are the ignorant person. If you truly support the American troops, okay, then you would not support the ongoing wars that we are actively engaging in. And also, you would not offer unconditional support to every American troop. I don't give a fuck. 
if you are a military veteran, okay? Being a good person is so much more important than that. There are plenty of brilliant, awesome, incredible veterans who feel conflicted with what they did, who feel conflicted about their service, who understand what they did, recognize it, and speak out against it. About Face is a great uh, example uh, of this, uh, one of the organizations, the one that Mike Preisner is a part of as well. I think it was uh, Veterans Against Foreign Wars, uh, I believe. Like, there are plenty of people who joined for a multitude of different reasons, maybe because they were poor, maybe because they were escaping, like, you know, the horrific conditions. But this notion, this notion that, like, you know, these are people who are willing to die for us, like, you fucking piece of shit. It's about their intent and reason why they joined that I will respect. Like, you are speaking like someone who is not a part of the military. I, mean, I assume you're not. That was the old org. It's about face veterans against the war now. Yeah. Like, stop, stop hiding behind cowardly American propaganda. Okay? Stop it. Left flank vets as well. Robert E. Lee, who was a Confederate general during the Civil War, said, it is good that war is terrible lest we become accustomed to it. I get it. I know. <laughs> I quoted a Confederate general. The whole of the internet is going to explode now. But he has an excellent point. If we do not experience the... This guy is like firing off self-reports, dude. The terrors of war, it will be war without end because there is nothing to lose. Drone warfare terrifies me because it separates the human experience of war from the act of killing. Look at drone, I mean, the only people who feel the experience are the drone warfare operators. And they are going through mental health crisis left, right, and center because they stare at the people's faces and those people have no idea it's coming, none whatsoever. If we lose empathy for the results of war, we are doomed to repeat it over and over and over and over and over again. And what do we do when it's on us? With the intelligence like it is, it's so imprecise, imprecise that if you take a five digit grid coordinates and five digits the other way, if one digit is wrong, you miss the target. And so if the intelligence is off by the most minor degree, you're gonna miss the target. And then, you know, where, where did the munitions end up? Where do they land, you know? And a big I'm sorry when we get around to it six months later. So um, it's too flaky, too flaky and shaky. They made the controllers for some of our, our automated weapons. They turned them into Xbox style controllers because it's, because the argument is, oh, well, because, you know, we understand Xbox controllers. This generation understands this, this, this style of controllers. And it becomes easier and easier and easier and easier and easier to pull the trigger and think that there's no consequence. Look, I'm sorry, I can't even wait till I sit down. I understand everything you're both saying about how technology can affect what can happen in the world. Precision strikes all over, but to sit there and take, in my opinion, a naive perspective in saying that drone technology is gonna have such a profound effect when it comes to the impact of how we conduct the business of war, because it is a business at the end of the day. If it can prevent the loss of life, precise strikes to limit the loss of our brothers and sisters' lives, I am 100% for it. The humanity of war of you taking a life and me seeing that and the emotional impact of the rest of the people in that room versus one person sitting on a computer who we can keep in a safe environment and provide mental health and care for, where's the real downside? We are still taking life, regardless. But it's being done in a precise manner that is actually preventing the loss of our soldiers' lives. I only- Dude, that's so scary, dude. That's such a fucking terrible take. It's like, it just kind of goes to show you the, uh, the lack of consideration to the lives that uh, these people have taken. Uh, if they have actually taken lives. I, they just don't give a fuck. Like, they don't care that we're just blowing people up regularly, dude. That's fucking wild to me. It, it is wild to me that, like, 
we can have a conversation about this. Like, we can have a debate about this. Like, you know, which way should we murder people? Well, you know, if we do drones, like, you know, our KD will look better. Only disagreed because I'm more in the middle, honestly. I've seen the positive and the negative that can come out of drones. Like, like you said, it's, you can minimize the loss of life by not having a pilot up there. But I completely agree with what you were saying, where it's becoming like almost like a video game. Um, so I'm kind of in the middle, honestly. But what's the difference from you pushing that button or sitting up there with a Mark 19 raining down on a village, 40 millimeter grenades, <clears throat> raining down hellfire? There's a psychological difference between you doing it and seeing it in person on the ground versus doing it from behind or in like a room from a drone. You know, I think there's, I, I, like I said, I'd have to do a lot more research and figure out the specifics, but I think there's a psychological difference between those two types of kills. Okay, but what you're saying there is you would rather inflict more harm in mental aid. Oh, this is psychotic. Like, normal humans should look at this conversation between two people and recognize how psychotic this combo is. This is like, this is insane, dude. Anguish on the soldier by physically being there, by pulling that trigger, by f letting that Mark 19 40 millimeter grenade go. Right. And rip and watch the destruction they're doing and put them right. into anxiety and depression and PTSD versus it being a video game that they can turn off and begin to function as a nor normal human being and not have that long term damage. But the thing you, you're forgetting is it's not a video game. Those are real people that they just killed with that drone. Oh, so no. the, the psychological effects might be the exact same. They could be. And no, I'm very well aware that those are real people. I, I've walked in those deserts. I've walked down those streets. I know exactly what you're talking about. If you're telling me that with your experience and your PTSD, if you couldn't take that away and put yourself in a... In, in a are they going to talk about like who's dying? in the process at any point like what the fuck's going on dude he's just like dude my ptsd is so bad from uh doing the murders like we should eliminate that ptsd by doing the murders from really far away like how about not doing the murders i, I don't know like am i crazy just don't don't do the fucking murders i i feel like in a space to be able to have gone through that experience and not dealt with the fallout and the repercussion, the fear. You wouldn't want that? If I am fighting an enemy that I have no connection to and they are fighting an enemy that they have no connection to, what is the incentive to stop? The answer is very clear, mutual self-destruction. Nuclear technology has been around for years. Wait, shut the fuck up. Like, okay, are we giving Afghanistan a nuke? Is that the advocacy that we're engaging in? Like, we should give Iran... Fuck stopping their uh, nuclear program. We should give them the nukes. My man said mutual self-destruction. Yeah, dude, the mutual self-destruction of, like, uh, Yemen being under a forced famine is a consequence of, like, uh, the, the Saudi regime uh, blockades and active warfare uh, and, and bombs being dropped upon Yemen every day, American bombs like that. Where's the mutual uh, self-destruction there? What are they going to do, bro? Are they going to fight back? Like, how are they going to fight back? With slingshots, dude? So many, how many countries in the world have access to nuclear technology right now? Plenty. Plenty. Why hasn't one nuke been fired? They have been. The Pakistani-Indian border, they've been throwing them at each other left and right. Left and right, yes, but on a global scale, realistically, why haven't any of the superpowers launched? Why hasn't China... I mean, your point is, your point is solid, mutually assured destruction, but the argument still stands. Why is, why is North Korea continually trying to find a way to get a missile to our shores, to load it with a payload? Because as soon as they can do it from over there, they will. At what point does it stop? At what point do we have people who are not wearing a uniform who are in control of the trigger saying, you know what? This group of people today, boop, 
You don't think there's political and economic fallout of that? That's going to hit that's on a, a deeper question. scale. I mean, realistically, you're talking about hundreds of people being that's, taken yeah, out. You any got one-off kill situations that's, that are yeah, happening. That's, that's got, any foreign intervention. I think the, uh, the cost of dissonance is actually greater on the political aspect of this. If a politician can wage war without sending their troops, and I agree with you, like I care about the health and well-being of our troops. Oh, I agree with that wholeheartedly. Involved. That part yes. of the argument is, is not in question. Yeah. But if they're so easily able to wage war because of drone technology, then we're, again, separating ourselves from that, the human cost of it. The military receives too much funding. <laughs> um, Bro, they should have had, like, some anti-war vets, dude. Like, they should have had some fucking anti-imperialist veterans like what the fuck is this this conversation is like this conversation is like almost like a circle jerk from the point of view of I imperialism it's just it, it has turned into propaganda i i i can already sense the answers <laughs> with the people that don't agree with me um, we spend a drastic amount of money on our department. Anti-war vets don't exist. You're literally wrong. You are wrong. You're surrounded by them in here in this chat. Department of Defense. A lot of that money just about? doesn't even go to the troops themselves. It goes to defense contractors and research and development. And our military is so large and so spread out that when you get to the level of the individual soldier, sailor, service member, there's not a lot of money to invest in them personally, especially when you're looking at equipment or, you know, uh, health care, things like that, you know? So we've gotten used to this conversation where, you know, if we, if, if we don't spend all this money on the military, we're not supporting our troops. And truthfully, I just think that money could be used more wisely to invest in our troops especially when they get out, so that they don't have to face these battles alone. You know what, you said something there that made me waver. Yeah. Okay, and I know you know the pushback that you were expecting. And you're right, you're 100% right. Spree de corps, how could you say we need to cut back on defense spending? Right. There's a lack of accountability and transparency that's happening. Absolutely. It's being hidden under documents of paperwork that are being submitted to Congress and the Senate for approval. And defense spending, realistically, were what? How many times over the next country? The next the 13 country? countries combined? Yeah. We spend more than them? Yeah, it was the next it's 13 <laughs> combined, exactly. Especially because departments within the military, right? How many times have you heard use or lose, right? Oh the my end God. Of the, exactly. the end of the fiscal year <laughs> oh is my coming. God. If you don't use the rest of your budget, you risk budget cuts, and now, you're, now your unit's buying a whole bunch of BS that they didn't have before or need it. Well, and the worst part about it is, is we're spending this money and the common phrase in the military made by the lowest bidder. Right. You're not getting quality equipment. You're getting, yeah, it, it's tested, but it's not the best piece of equipment you can have based upon the amount of money that's spent. As, as a person who has to make decisions for a company level and I assist in making some decisions for a battalion staff, one of the most frustrating statements that I hear when I'm making a training plan or when I'm doing a maintenance plan is, there's just no funding for that. And my, what, what do you mean there's no funding for that? Like, we got money for this thing over here. Yeah, well, there was funding for that. Well, where did that money go? Well, that's a different pot of money. How do I get into that pot of money? I mean, you can't touch that pot of money. Why can't I touch that pot of money? Because it's for this thing. Well, okay, well, let's do that thing. No, can't do that. Why? Because there's no money for that. I, I can't describe the level of frustration being in the Army Reserves and wanting to make my unit the best possible unit in our region, in our theater, and time after time, well, we just have to wait. You stupid fucks, America literally protects the world? From what, America? America does not protect the world, brother. America makes the world a less safe place. Maybe the same could be said about any hegemonic power if, they, uh, if the roles were reversed. But this notion that America protects the world is completely psychotic, okay? America certainly doesn't protect you from the top of the hour ad, though. Because it's coming. There's a 60 second ad break. Now, a thing that can protect you from the top of the hour ad break, though, is uh, subscriptions.
whether a $5 a month subscription or a Twitch Prime, which is a free subscription, or use an ad block or a VPN, uh, you can protect yourself from the ad break and enjoy an ad-free broadcasting experience. Here's the ad now. Because there's no money for that. One of the things that frustrated me and that frustrates me now looking back at how much I was making in the military, and you're not making a lot of money. And if, going back to what you said, it's like all this money that the US government has, why don't we spend more on just the paychecks of the members? Trans people should be allowed in the military. I'll be honest, I didn't expect this. Really? Yeah, me either. Okay. Honestly, why? why didn't why? you expect it? Uh, Bro, they are such libs. They didn't even get like a hardcore hoorah dipshit chud vet either. Like they didn't get the classic military veteran that is a meme at this point. They didn't get a single one of those guys. Okay. They're all libs. And they don't even have a fucking like leftist, like anti-imperialist veteran either. Especially when I was in, uh, there's a lot of concern with the readiness aspect of it, mm -hmm. you know, uh, being able to support soldiers that are transitioning, things like that. Right. The reason why I came to the middle is because as long as they meet the standard and that it doesn't affect readiness, I see absolutely no problem with it because the Department of Defense has done this before where they barred gay people women from certain things and those same questions were brought up and now they're integrated into the force. One of my cycles in basic training, we did uh, what we call icebreakers. It's the first time that the soldiers actually interact with the drill sergeants where we are not yelling at them. One of the soldiers stood up, introduced uh, at that time himself and said, I am so-and-so. I have joined because I want to get my money for college so that I can go to fashion design because I really want to be on RuPaul's Drag Race. And I said, all right, hey, live your truth, kid. I don't have a problem with that at all, you know? And that, at that time, male soldier came to me later and said, drill sergeant, I don't, I don't know how to express this because I've heard some things that some tweets went out from a particular guy who was in charge at the time who said, we're not going to allow transgendered soldiers in the military. And they said, hey, you know, I'm, I'm transgendered. And I said, listen, what's stopping you from serving? What's stopping you? They went to their chain of command and the chain of command said, well, I mean, you do your job and you do it as well or better than anybody else here. So it doesn't affect force readiness. So start the process. She is now serving in Germany in the army and there has been absolutely no uh, force multiplier loss at all. If the person has joined the military for the purpose of serving the military, I can't see myself saying you should not be allowed to serve. As long as we're in the uniform, we all have to put the uniform first. And if they're willing to put the uniform first and they want to serve honorably, then hell yes. Right. Who am I to say no? When I was a counselor, a peer counselor at a vet center, and I put together this group and I had a guy who was a Navy corpsman, the guy was extremely gay, I mean verbally, vis visibly gay. <laughs> My man said this dude was gay as fuck, dude. He's visibly gay. And uh, he, was, he wanted a place in the group. And I said, okay. And then I called other buddies of mine, friends of mine, about this gay guy wants to be in a group. But none of them had an answer. And I went to the one guy I knew, a guy named Kerry Murback from Las Vegas. And he says, Culmer, he says, what's the problem? And after I thought about it, I was the problem. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, I didn't have any particular negative feelings, but I kept going around to try to find somebody to help me make a decision. And there was nobody available because there was no decision to be made. I know that one of the biggest questions that is the question of should transgendered persons serve in the military comes up quite a bit. Mm -hmm. The common answers that we receive from the pushback is, well, where do we house them? What, what barracks do they stay in? The male <laughs> barracks or the female oh, barracks? Yeah, that's... The words they try and put in our mouths, and by they I mean individuals who have not served or individuals who are the empty cans that rattle so loudly even if they're serving 
It's because they, they refuse to look at people at an individual level and what they're doing and who they are. I don't, look, don't come to me and tell me that. The unfortunate reality is that uh, because America's main economy revolves around murder, uh, the uh, Pentagon is also the largest hiring organization for trans people on the planet. That is a reality, unfortunately. We can't have trans soldiers serving because taxpayer money. I don't come to where you work and tell you how to mow a f***ing lawn. Yeah. All right? Case closed. Yeah. I would encourage my children to enlist. Why? Honestly, free education. Truth. I am forever grateful for the post 9-11 GI Bill. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, we will never get free college in this country. Do you understand? We will never get free college in this country. And this is one of the most important reasons as to why, okay? We just will not. Like, how sad is it that in European countries, okay, these socialist European countries where they're teaching homosexuality and transgender rights in colleges, you can just get this shit for nearly free or free. And uh, you can improve the American labor force, make it more competitive internationally. And the government provides that for you without you having to blow your fucking body up. That's crazy, dude. Crazy. It's not even just OECD nations, though. I mean, Turkey has free college. But here in America, you got to sell your body to the American military, baby. And only then can you get a fucking communications degree and also uh, sell life insurance to all your fucking friends. With, of course... Nice little PTSD on the side, though, as seasoning to fuck your day up. Um, yeah. Yeah. I became a very different person because of education. And I can't imagine being thousands and thousands of dollars in debt right now, having to pay that back. Adding to what you're saying, I would qualify the statement of I would encourage my children by saying the encouragement is there. It's not a forced, hey, you better join. Like, it's not that. It's if you don't know what the next steps are, if you don't have a plan, and most people don't, they don't know what comes after high school. Why don't you go someplace where they already have a plan and you can just fit into the plan for a little bit. I wanna ask- Dude, that's so terrible, dude. Yeah, that's called fucking college, dog. What the fuck? about your children, would you tell them when they became eligible to enter the military, would you tell them about, assuming educational benefits are the same at that time, would you encourage them as a result of the benefits that they could be entitled to? And if so, suppose 20 minutes later a war starts and they have to go to war. How do they deal with that? After hearing from you, their dad, the benefits, Right, yeah. You know, realistically, I mean... Whenever you say texting Tommy, I'm actually looking at Twitter to see fucking spicy takes. I'm not going to call them out. Uh, they're, they're... I just saw one that was ridiculous. Like, you're going to a 4th of July party today. You should be willing... Or you should be ready to have a conversation about the true history of this country. <laughs> It's like, come on, dude. I mean, it just, just sometimes it's normal to just like drink beer and, and fucking grill. Okay. It doesn't have to like, that doesn't mean you're justifying like America's uh, genocidal foundations. Okay. Just fucking chill. I, I promise you it's fine. Okay. It literally is okay to have just a little bit of fun as a treat.
You know what I mean? Just. And just like be around friends and stuff. And grill meat. It's a holiday for non-white people we celebrate, but not for independence. Like, I'm Turkish, okay? This does not, like, the 4th of July was not uh, baked into my mind growing up. Because I didn't grow up here. I grew up in Turkey. Okay? But I love it. I, I think it's great to just get together and drink brews in the middle of the day and then fucking grill some goddamn delicious meats. Okay? I don't understand why people just can't experience it for that, you know? I'm Native American. I don't celebrate Thanksgiving, but it's good family time. Exactly. Exactly. Well, you're also... <laughs> well, you're also Canadian, I think. Or, well, indigenous First Nations from Canada. If your name is Mellow Canuck. Grilling meat is horrible. It ruins the taste. I will ban you. I will literally fucking ban you. I've Shut got up. a, I've got a daughter who's going to be turning 11 and a son that just turned six. Okay. And you know, just to openly share, um, I'm recently widowed, you know, so thinking oh, about the build right. out and what that looks like for children, you know, now being a single parent and having to look at that war is definitely something you think about, but at that stage in life, you're going to have a general idea of who your child is, <clears> who, what they're about. I was in that situation in 99. My friends are posting Instagram infographics about genocide. They're the no fun leftist side. I mean, dude, if you want to, if you want to inform people about uh, Native American genocide, indigenous genocide, certainly go off. Like there is no problem with doing that on your social media. I'm just saying that like, if you're going to a party and like, <laughs> if you're going to a fucking party and people have invited you there and you're like, I cannot believe you guys are here to celebrate today. We are, what we are celebrating is the, uh, mass, uh, it, what we're celebrating here today is the genocide of in, an indigenous population, like that we still absolutely destroy on the daily. It, it's like, okay. I mean, that sucks, dude. You just fucked the vibes up a little bit. You know? Just why? Just, I treat it as uh, a, a day to fucking get together and you know eat grilled meats. Okay, that's the way I that's the way I look at it. You look so stupid right now. Zero awareness right now. You look so stupid right now. Six month subscriber. This motherfucker has subscribed for six months. Only to once say play Neo. Then to say who even ran on defunding the police. And now to just say I look stupid because I said enjoy yourselves. Okay. I've seen conservative posts that if you hate America, then you shouldn't celebrate Independence Day thoughts. Yeah, who cares what conservatives think, dude? Like, you're really gonna fucking lose sleep over what dumbass hogs think? They also believe in QAnon and shit. Look at what's going on in Canada with indigenousness, indigenousness kids. I mean, not only did not only did I uh, briefly talk about it, but I also uh, rated the the surf's charity stream for it. So also I don't care about fucking Canada. I'm sorry. Okay. We're talking about America, baby. It's the 4th of July and we're talking about America's independence day. Okay. How dare you bring up Canada in this? I didn't realize we were talking about America's hat. Okay. With a goddamn leaf on their fucking flag. We get to celebrate our independence from uh, the Brits. You don't. The Queen still cucks Canada every day. 
Also, I don't know why you're like uh, upset about literally found hundreds of dead kids. Oops. Okay, but like, how, what does that have to do with? What does that have to do with going to a fucking uh, 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 4th of July party and grilling with your friends? Like, we're not even talking about it. America has done a fuckload of Native American genocide. Of course, the United States has, obviously. But like, why are you bringing up an example from fucking Canada? Like, am I talking about Canada Day right now? Like, do you think, do you think I'm learning about this from you just right now? When I already told you that, uh, not only am I aware of it, but also, uh, this community helped, uh, raise money for, uh, a, a, a charity that will hopefully uncover more of the, uh, children, the indigenous children that were, uh, murdered in residential schools or died in residential schools. Like, what, what does this have to do with anything? Fuck America, but I will use the holiday to hang out with friends and eat good food, same as Thanksgiving. Exactly. I joined knowing that Kosovo was a thing that could happen to me. Um, it, and then it wasn't Kosovo. And then it was Iraq. And the first thing my father said was, I know what you're about to go into because he had been in Vietnam. The military gives us expensive knowledge. That's what we want the younger generation to have, our children to have. We want them to have the expensive knowledge. The problem I think Canadians are just mad that they're still, they still haven't been able to uh, gain their independence from the British. I'm just going to say it, dude. <sighs> you did genocide instead of stopping it? Seems good. What? Oh, oh, you're talking about him. Yeah. Sorry, Canadians. Maybe one day, okay? I'm feeling America is fuck right now, dude. The problem with expensive knowledge is you, you don't get the benefits of the knowledge until you've gone through the experience. And that experience can be expensive. Yeah. I'm going to pause and bring Mahadi in. Oh, yeah. You were back there. <laughs> Look at this little guy. Holy Christ. Still here. Yeah. I heard him laugh. Yeah. I, I heard the chuckle. Yeah. Jesus Christ. First of all, I, I'd like to say that I mostly agree with everything that you guys said, you know. Um, but, you know, for example, like when we talk about college, right, college being outrageously expensive in this country, I think a more productive way to address that is why is college in our country so expensive? I'm not sure if as a parent I would be comfortable with rolling the dice with my children. Um, when it comes to mental health, physical health, um, injuries, you know, things like that. I can provide my knowledge, my experience, those that I've met, veterans that I've met. But, you know, because you want what's best for your child, right? And um, so, yeah, I'm not entirely opposed to it, I guess is the well, answer you, you're looking for. Well, you talk for. about wanting the best for them, but what's right. the actual feeling you have on it? How do you genuinely feel about it as an individual, not the parent wanting the best for their child? Is this something that you'd sit there and say, look, I get it, I support you, because I actually believe in it, or I'm gonna support you because I'm your parent, and I see the other side of it, and that kind of gives me that drawback of saying, No, because, hey, yeah, no, because look, I benefited from the military greatly. Like, it, my, I would not be sitting here the way I am today if it was not for the military, you know? So I totally understand that aspect, you know? Um, but like I said, I just, see, I just seen it go wrong too many times, you know? Like, young people coming back with shrapnel across their face, and I'm just, their life is, you know, in the hands of the U.S. government, and I'm not entirely comfortable with just that aspect of it. Hey, man, that's good. Yeah, I like your idea. Of course, of course. Yeah, the black shirt goatee dude was in the stock market video defending hedge funds, like, straight up, unconditionally offering full-blown support to the hedge funds, so. Guy in VR talks about their worst day as a soldier. Yeah, I don't want to watch that right now. That's a classic, though. Ginny Stream. And like this city, he will triumph. Because while we forgive others for their doubt and uncertainty, our hearts will... 
This is what 4th of July is about. Eating as many glizzies as you possibly, physically, humanly can shove down your gullet, okay? Oh my god, they're just booing him, dude. That's so funny, dude. Yo, everybody hates Bill de Blasio. <laughs> Boo! That's what you get. Like, the only thing that will make New Yorkers like their mayor is if 9-11 happens. Okay, that's it. Uh, outside of that, they're always gonna hate their fucking mayor. What, what do you mean, Pepe? It's literally true. Rudy Giuliani. The, like, least likable character on the fucking planet. Is, like, one of the most popular New York mayors. America's mayor. Is what he was regarded as. And the reason for why that happened is because 9-11. He was the mayor. During 9-11. Three dating coaches like helped me, me on know? three blind right dates. Oh, Let's so go! Okay. So After how? this, this is the last video. After this, I am going to do P.O. Box, okay? Next time we go out, I'll tell you all the secrets about my hair. <laughs> you want to know more? I can tell you next time, you know? But hey, I okay! You know. Howdy. Who are you? Uh, I'm Azim, uh, 21 years old. Uh, I, I was told I was gonna go on three speed dates. Also having like some dating coaches in my ear, right? They're gonna kind of help me along, you know? Why do you need their help? Uh, to be honest, I am terrified of dating. I've only been on like, re like really five dates. I'll be like, oh God, I don't really they like me. I think I'm just talking to them. I think I'm just annoying now. I think it's just better like if I like just stop talking. I think it's a lot of self-doubt in myself, you know? Ah, uh, yeah. My name is Eric Leonard, more known as the Portland Dating Coach. I'm Cora, dating relationship expert. I'm Marina. Um, I'm also a dating coach. Nice to meet you, you know. If you're comfortable, can you tell us when was the last time you were in fact intimate with someone? Oh, like probably my last girlfriend, even then we never really had sex, you know, so. A lot to look forward to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you're doing something really brave here. We've got your back and I think we're gonna bring in your first date. Hello, hello. But, hey, how you doing, baby? Good, how are you? He's so nervous. I would be too. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm Azim, by the way. Oh, nice to meet you. I'm Kat. Kat. Did you, I, did you high five? Know? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how does it feel to have someone like telling you what to do? Is that uncomfortable? It's, it's really surreal. So Kat, so what brought you to uh, this thing? Like, what made you come here, you know? Honestly, I still don't know, because I was like, this year I'm just going to do a stay single 2021. Okay. And here I am. Terrible decision. Okay, I've I've been locked into a stay single 2021 and let me tell you it's not good folks. Okay, don't do it. Just don't do it. Dude, everybody got fucking wifed up. This past year during COVID, I think I talked about this already. This past year during COVID, three girls that I used to hook up with are now pregnant and like are having children. They're not used to hook up with or have hooked up with in the past. It's wild, dude. Everybody's just like. Everybody's just fucking, you know. Everybody's baby crazy, dude. With yours? No, 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 no. Obviously not me. I'm saying. I'm going on a date, so. Is you because you're 30, dude? Yeah, I mean, but these girls are like fucking 25, 26. It's not like they're. Solution never works. Hey, that, that's mean, the takeaway. Ask her why she wants to stay single. Why do you want to stay single? Why single 2021, you know? Staying single 2021 is more like working on myself. She wants you to step up and talk about yourself. So like I graduated in UW from a, with a biology degree, right? Nice. And like really what I'm trying to do with that is I'm trying to become a doctor, really specifically like a pediatrician, you know? Breathe, keep your energy calm. So are you like going through the application process? Uh, yeah, I just submitted the application just recently. She's 
a woman on a mission. She's like interviewing him. Where are you like looking to go? I I like to stay here. I, you know, you like you know, you don't matter because like you know, it'd be nice to be here with all my friends. You know, hopefully be here with you. You know too. But like, <laughs> well, we'll see. They're not really vibing. She's really quite still with this whole thing, right? While he has this notable animation. I definitely think he's intimidated. By Bro, they found the most ethical dating coaches. Two women and a gay guy. Okay? Like, they... You can't... You can't have a straight dude here. I promise. It's like 0% chance that that will be a guy that gives you good advice. I mean, even I am the perfect example of this, okay? Whenever I give you dating advice, like, half the chance, like, Oh, fuck you! You fucking animal! <clears throat> By her. What about you? You lived here your whole life? How about... Oh no, uh, I uh, I went to high school in Michigan. It's getting a little bit like uh, informational. I need to know the amount of confirmed makeouts that these ladies have before I can listen to them. Okay, bet you she doesn't even have a thousand confirmed makeouts. You know what I'm saying? Let alone five thousand. That's not happening. You Bring know? the conversation to a more playful place. So tell me, so what what kind of hobbies do I do? What do I do for fun? You know? What do I do for fun? Yeah. This guy sounds so nervous. Maybe because he has like an earpiece in his ear or something. But like, um, I have a cat. Okay. It's my cat's birthday today. Actually. Oh, happy birthday to the cat! Yeah, yeah. yeah thank you. Thank you. I'll let her know. Okay. But uh, yeah. No, but like honestly, I tell her. She's intriguing. She's really cute and I like her vibes. It's a little bit of an edge. She's got pink hair. Let me just say real quick that like you got pink, you got like the little highlights in your hair, you know, you seem to got a lot going on in your life. And, like, I'm intrigued by you. I'm super intrigued, you know? I, I really appreciate that, okay. although I don't know how much of it is like your earpiece, if they're in your head, or... I won't reveal that. <laughs> say you'll find out on the second date. Hey, so let's say hypothetically, right? Let's say we're on a second date, right? Let's oh God, that was the worst way that he could have reset that statement. Just, well... I guess the only way to find out is on the second date. Say like I plan a picnic for you, right? Would, it, would you be into that? A picnic. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm already like looking forward to the next, like, next date. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, right, okay. <laughs> it, it, it's at the end of this date. Thanks so much for joining okay. me. That was fun. Great to meet you. Thank you. Are they still talking to you? They are, they're still in my ear, but I just want to say real quick, thank you so much for being you know, I really do appreciate yeah, no, you. Yeah, for sure, right? yeah. Okay. Oh God, that fucking. Okay. How did that, that go for you? It feels a little weird. Like I feel like almost ingenuine. I don't know. It's a weird feeling, but I feel good. I feel good. Yeah, what do you think of him so far? I don't think he feels worthy or um, feels comfortable approaching a woman. She was, in fact, question. I mean, he he flubbed it big time with his delivery. His delivery was incredibly nervous, right? He had incredibly nervous delivery, but also having said that, uh, automatically there is a mistrust because of the earpiece. Like the earpiece absolutely creates a, an environment where you're like, eh, I don't really trust you. Like, is anything that you're saying actually your genuine thoughts or is anything that you're, or is everything coming in from your earpiece? So like, I think that, definitely uh, plays a big role here. Mentioning his sincerity a lot, I think. If I can be completely honest, I'm not convinced she wants to see him again. It was kind of anticlimactic at the end because it she wanted to leave. <laughs> so next date, lead a little bit more. Okay. So this next woman is a few years older than you. How does that feel? <laughs> uh, I'm a little excited now. I'm a little, a little nervous too, but I mean, <laughs> we'll see what's up, you know? Just remember to stay in your body just breathe in through your nose to the edge of your breath and release. This will calm down your nervous system. When she enters, look into her eyes and do like a little water cheers. You're James Bond. Own it. Hey. Hi. Don't forget the cheers. I forgot the cheers. Uh, I'm sorry. I got, they got, they got. <laughs> forgot the cheers. <laughs> oh, God. He's so cute, though. I don't know, you know, they got me in my ear and like, yeah. I'm real, I forgot what they're trying to, like, they told me to say that beforehand, I already forgot it, so. <laughs> there 
in, they're talking yeah. into your ear. Yeah, they're like in my ear right now. Yeah. Oh, they're telling Jesus. me to like look in your eyes already. and like cheers. I forgot ruined, what that ruined. exactly meant to be honest. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. I think up the with glass the and cheers. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right, cheers. Yeah. <laughs> They're onto something. <laughs> what, how did you get here? Like I've been kind of like, I'm not gonna lie, kind of on the dating scene for like a pretty long time, you yeah. know? What about Tinder? Have you tried Tinder? Ooh. I have, uh, not the not the greatest. Avoid talking about previous dates. Straight guys don't like being called cute by other guys. I mean, he's adorable, dude. I don't give a fuck if he doesn't like it or not. He is objectively adorable. And I think he's like, you can tell that he is like a kind person. You know what I mean? He's just nervous. There's uh, plenty of horrible things I could call a human being. Getting upset about cute is kind of weird. It's lead the conversation. What kind of hobbies you got? What you like to do in your free time, you know? I love dressing up and Ooh. just going out. Clearly you have excellent style. Well, let me say that I can I can definitely see that. You got like amazing style, yeah. you know? Like I saw you walk out, I'm like, damn. All right, thank you. <laughs> and what are your hobbies? Killing it. The kind of like split between, you know, like work on like medical school applications. Ooh medical school you trying to be a doctor uh yeah i'm trying to be a pediatrician really okay that's one of yeah. the best say you like that you, you like you like you like the doctor vibe you face it i i like men with money <laughs> start talking about why you want to be a doctor medical system hasn't like treated black people well you know like just remember you can breathe you can take time to think between i like people i want to be money. that doctor i can be like you know hey look it's not all bad there's people who are gonna support you people are gonna yeah. be here for you know oh my god that's i was actually wondering i was like what made him want to be a pediatrician and that's probably the best answer i've heard flirt more make her feel seen you know i'm talking to a cute girl here so hey, I feel like he's, he's charming you charming yeah. girls love compliments ask her what she likes about you and preface the question by being like I have a bold question. Yeah, get her consent on that too. Is it okay if I give you a bold question? Yeah. And uh, yo, I got like a bold question if you're okay to like answer you. I'm worried now. What, what you like about me, you know? I think your ambition, it, like it, it stands out. Also the hair. Yeah, oh. So. I don't know how you keep it so high. It's super fast, which makes it hard to follow. But also at the same time, this is the cutest shit I've seen, dude. This dude is awesome. I want him to be happy. I want him to be able to date all of these women, okay? That's Ow. what I want. Next time we go out, I'll tell you all the secrets about my hair. Gee, you want to know more? I can tell you next time, you know? But hey, I, next day, you like that. Want, want but yeah, so for like a next day, what would you like to do, you know? Because like, would you like to maybe do a picnic, maybe go find something to eat? Oh, wait, wait, would it be like, where would it be? Ask her for her favorite type of international cuisine. What, what kind of food you like? What's the like? Dude, the yeah, the straight PUA coach is necessary here. Let's be real. You'd probably be like, disrespect her, disrespect her, disrespect her. Bring up her age. Tell her that uh, this is the first time you're, you've... Tell her that uh, she looks good for an older woman. And that you were surprised. You know what I mean? That's like, that's what a, a, a straight PUA guy would say here. Find her insecurity, the chink in her armor, and just penetrate. International food, what you like? I love my, my, my Thai food. Tell her that you would love to make her a Tom Yum from Thailand and that she is Tom Yum. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna make you a Tom Yum from Okay, Th this dude is just fucking with him now. Like, the, the confidence needed to be able to deliver that. The confidence needed to be able to deliver that is like he's not capable of doing that play to the play to the guy you're coaching thailand and tum yummy i don't know I, you're gonna make a a tum yum okay, okay from and thailand. that and you tum yummy you know like ah, that's so like corny but cute <laughs> you're very charming mm -hmm. and i think you're gonna attract just the person you're looking for oh no it's brutal absolutely brutal that's like, I mean, that literally is just like, yeah, I'm not into you, but I hope someone is. That's what she just said. Fuck. Stay decisive. Be like, I'll see you at that picnic. You know what? Next day, I'm going to see you at that picnic. All right. Well, great to meet you. Keep your charm. Keep your charm and continue to be ambitious. Thank you so much. We're curious if you ever feel intimidated by women. Uh, not going to lie. Sometimes, you know, I feel like they can like see through me sometimes. Dude, he is sweating, dude. Dimes, you know? 
Only good things to see. <laughs> you got right, this. Let's bring in Sophie. I'll Having straight women coaches like a fisherman asking fish how to catch them? Wait, what? No, I think straight women dating coach would be fucking awesome. What are you talking about? They can give you all the secrets, dude. Everything I know about uh, dating women, I learned from my platonic girlfriends, dude. Are you kidding me? They know what they like. No girl was serious to say yes when they know about the earpiece. Yeah, that's true. The Nickelodeon shirt shows he's a kid. Not a man yet. <laughs> oh, that's pretty funny. I'm Azim, by the way. Your name? I'm Sophie. Sophie, nice to meet you. It's kind of funny, like, that people have a take like that, like a disastrous take like that about, you know, a disastrous take, like, uh, about him not learning from, uh, women, but then all of the incel dating advice Andes, the PUA guys, have never been around women. Like, they, they've only seen women as an enemy combatant. And you can tell from the way that they fucking, uh, operate, the way that they talk, like, they, they unironically treat women like, uh, like enemy combatants. Nice to meet you. This is interesting. Oh um, no, for sure. Compliment her. I love your eyes, honestly. Oh, it's... thank you. Just be genuinely curious about the person in front of you. You like anime? Yeah, do you? Oh, yo, I'm big weeb. Oh big weeb. my god. Okay, that'll make this way easier. <laughs> there you go. Done. Rap. They're bonding. <laughs> They're already doing it. I like Hunter Hunter, Hunter if Hunter. you've ever seen oh, it. Oh my god, I love Hunter Hunter. I got like the manga that continues after. Say the Chimera Ant was too long. That's what I would be like in the earpiece. I'd be like, say the Chimera Ant was drawn out, okay? And that everybody's, everybody's coping when they say it's not. After the anime ends, mm -hmm. they have some good ass fights. Do curl say that, say that they did a better job than Sword Art Online, which is a trash anime with their video game one. With Greed Island was better than everything that Sword Art Online ever put out. Uh, uh, he's so good ever fight? Yeah, actually, that, that's the fight that I'm talking about. Oh, so, okay, I gotta, I gotta pick that up. He's so excited. He's into. Are you into Demon Slayer at all? Demon Slayer? Oh, yeah. I just saw the movie recently. Save. Oh, shit. I forgot I was gonna watch that. I heard good things about the Demon Slayer movie. What did I tell you, chat? Women love Demon Slayer, dude. Okay? It's all right. I mean, it took way too long to pick up. It was like fucking Mandalorian on crack with how lengthy it was until it like actually picked up and was interesting. But, um, you know, girls do love Demon Slayer. It's like 20 episodes. He's also much calmer now. You can really tell he's actually comfy for once. Yeah. Fuck yeah. Tell her you're excited about how this is going. I'm, I was gonna say real quick, I'm super like, I'm so glad this is going really well, yeah, you know? Same. Like, <laughs> yeah, you're doing really, really good. Like, this is fun. She's into you, dude. So like, what, what are you doing right now? Are you in school? Are you in like, are you working right now? What's up with that? Recently, I took up like making little like daggers and like pocket knives with out of Red flag. resin and stuff. I mean, if you want to send some knives my way, like, yeah, God, that sounds awful. If you ever awful. want a knife, hit me up. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> so list some things you know about her. Got a lot going to you know, like you Thank make you. you make knives, you into yeah. it. And if they said leftist, true, definitely a leftist. To me, you know, <laughs> like it's like I got an Etsy where I make blades is like such a leftist fucking thing, dude. I, that sums me up. That's <laughs> my boy. I'm excited to learn more about you. I'm super excited to learn more about you, honestly. Yeah, dude, same. Is there anything cool that you do? Like I'm working at like my medical degree. Like I'm trying to like apply to medical school and stuff. Oh fuck yeah. Tell her a hobby you've always wanted to try. And like I like a, a side note to that too. I kind of want to learn how to like do like some sort of thing, like, like back flipping or something, you know? Like <laughs> I, I at least want to try once. <laughs> you you know? try oh, this dude is awesome. I love him. I'm gonna fucking date him, dude. Jesus Christ. What a cutie. What an absolute cutie, dude. Parkour? Yeah. That's just... actually sick as fuck. If you can, like, actually get going, I bet that would be really fun, you know? Right? Like, 
pull your chair closer to her. I'm really, I'm really liking it, you know? Like, this yeah, is like super duper you. like. Oh, I'm really glad. Put your hand on the table between you. This is a lot less nerve wracking talking. Honestly, like I kind of forgot we were here for a sec because we were just nerding out. Like, I'm really glad I came here, you know? Yeah, so Start talking about what you want to do on a next date. Let's say we go on the next date, right? Oh, I don't know, this is weird or not, but we can get like a like love banquet, you know? Get like, go to a park, you know? We can do like a little picnic, it'd be great. Yeah, that would be sick as fuck. We could play Smash Bros if you have it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> And then we could smash, bro. Boom, done. Broken. Frame shattered, okay? It's over. He broke the contract. It's just like... Literally everything you're saying, I am 100% on board for this. He loves her, dude. He's literally in love with her, dude. <laughs> so it's about time to end the date. You can tell her they're telling you to end the date. Unfortunately, it looks like they're trying to get me to like end the date, you know, like they're kind oh, of okay, about no that, worries. you know? Okay, here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. What did we learn from this? One, you literally do not need a dating coach, okay? You don't. They didn't say a single fucking thing that was helpful in this entire video. As a matter of fact, they hurt the process. Now, what I mean by that is attraction is a complicated subject. Okay? And there is someone out there for you, no matter how you feel. So as long as you are being yourself, and you have your hobbies, and you find someone with a similar interest, you will click. So stop being so fucking nervous, okay? And uh, don't get sad when things don't work out. Please stop being a dating coach right now. I don't need you. <laughs> But like, I gotta say, like, I would love to go on a second date or something. I'll show you my Animal Crossing town. Yes, I'm, I'm super hyped. <laughs> How was that? <laughs> I enjoyed myself a lot. That was fun. You did great. Yeah, honestly, I was having fun watching you guys, so you must have been having a lot of fun. Yeah, it was great. You just dove into it. <laughs> I, I think it was pretty, pretty good, honestly. What did you learn through this experience? Just find a 100% compatible woman on your blind date. I mean, how many instances do you have, like, be dating blind dates anyway like that's not a normal thing that people do regardless you already have like some level of compatibility on a on your dating resume that you obviously uh when you when you swipe with people you know what i mean so <sighs> okay i think it's time boys it's time to fucking uh Get into chat. Half of you have two personality traits. Well, Weave and liberal. You know, calm down. You need a perfect storm to find I'm a weave. Slow down. You know, don't overthink myself. You know. So yeah, this is really, this is this is really good. You know. Do you know if so? He on the second date with you. I think yeah. I think. Did you do Mandalorian season two? Yeah, I finished it. It was so good. Mandalorian season two was the opposite of Dave season two. Dave season two was like sad. After how good season one was, I felt kind of bad about it. Still good, but Mandalorian season two is it very good, very very good. Yeah, she will. Or at least you know what? At the very least, I'm I'm manifesting it. At the very Dave least. Dave was never good, so dude. You are literally the dumbest person in this chat. Okay. Dave season one is a masterpiece, dude. Shut the fuck up. It's so good. It's so fucking good. If you like Dave, you'll love Atlanta. I love Atlanta. Mando season two was really, really, really good though. You have any advice for first Tinder messages? Not really. Dave is booty dog. What the fuck? Why is this Atlanta versus Dave? Yes, Atlanta is better than Dave. Are you guys dumb? Yes. You know, you can enjoy two different things, right? Like one is a, one is a, significantly more artistic uh approach to complicated subjects than the other what the fuck i mean dave has its moments too but like atlanta is top to bottom atlanta is like i don't know top to bottom art because dave is a whole rip off of atlanta literally it is not dude what the fuck Dude, you guys are so weird. Why? Because it's like Lil Dicky, uh, who's a rapper, like 
growing up and blowing up. Dave is just Atlanta for white people, both pretty good. Dave is just white Lana. I don't think so. Unless you guys watch Atlanta for, uh, you know, Donald Glover's journey rather than uh, the, the, all the other stuff that's going on. You haven't seen Atlanta? I have. Why are, why are people, dude, you guys are so fucking stupid, dude. I, I don't understand. I love Atlanta. Okay. I've talked about Atlanta before. Motherfuckers be like, yo, you haven't seen it actually. Oh, uh, okay. I guess, I guess you know better than me, dude. That's crazy. I didn't realize I was talking to someone who knows my life experience better than me. That's crazy, man. That's fucking nuts, dude. It's P.O. Box time, though. Seriously. Fucking idiots, dude. God damn. It's just it's so triggering. So stupid. Being gaslit by fucking 25,000 idiots. Oh, my God. P.O. Box time, boys. For those of you who don't know, this is the part of the broadcast where you do P.O. Box. Anyway, uh, I have, like, a lot. So, let's do it. I'm going to start off with the two big packages first, okay? This, boys, I know what this is. This, ladies and gentlemen, is a box full of Teddy Fresh. Reopen? No, it said Teddy Fresh on it. Hi, Asan. We hope you love these pieces. Stay fresh, Teddy Fresh. We got some stickers in here. Oh my God. Oh fuck, dude. Oh, I know what the fuck I'm wearing today, dude. Okay. 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 Oh my god. Dude, dude, dude. Ethan and Hila fucking ripped me out, dude. Look at this shit. God damn. Okay, straight up. This is insane. I mean, when Ethan said, I'm going to fucking... When Ethan said, I'm going to fucking lace you up, I didn't realize, like, he was going to go this aggressive. Like, he just... He sent me so much, and it's so sick. My dad wears Teddy Fresh. Okay, I gotta say something. As a person who's also working on merchandise right now, okay, as a person who's also currently working on merchandise, 
It is mind boggling to me. Oh my God, there's so much here. Okay. It is honestly incredibly impressive how well they've been able to like, you know, put together a legitimate brand. Like an actual brand that is high quality and um, pretty solid. Like it is very cool. It's like, it's got a unique identity. It really is good. There's so much clothing. I know I'm going to wear the fuck out of these. I'm, I'm literally going to wear this today. And by the way, it's all Gila. That's not even a joke. That's what Ethan told me. Cause I asked him like, how the fuck, how do you do this? Like I have a, I have a white label production, uh, company that I'm working with, you know, like, how do you do that? How do you, how do you make like, you know, all this merch and stuff? Cause I've seen your stuff. I really like it. And he was like, dude, they just like take it serious. They, they do all of it on their own. Like it's, it's a standalone brand at this point. Not gonna put on any for the stream. What is this? Yo, was on. Saw your last stream. You got a lot of yerba mate. I thought you appreciate the stuff and the cause of the company founded by a recovering addict and staffed mostly by a recovering addict. We use fifty percent of our profits to house recovering addicts. Love the content. And if you want to see more, it's top of the hour. Time for an ad break. Oh my god! It literally is top of the fucking hour. To date, we've granted 2,170 sober living scholarships with a value of $1,085,000. Mad Claw Gonzo in the chat. We give you a swig and your purchase truly makes a difference in your community. Simply put, without you, nothing happens. That's pretty sick. Clean cause. Okay, well, I'm going to fucking run the ad right now, boys. It is literally top of the hour after all. So if you'd like to no longer see the ads while I do a hashtag ad for clean, all you need to do is subscribe, you know, for $5 or for free by connecting your Amazon prime account to your Twitch account. You get a free Twitch prime subscription a month, or you can use an ad blocker or you can use a VPN, but the ad break comes for all. Here's the ad break. Now, you know what? I'm going to change into this. I even got, I even got the fucking pants. Look. This is 160 milligrams of caffeine. Okay. Thank you for this.
All right, next up, we got an Amazon package. Our daycare provider dressing the part. What the fuck is this? Pokemon full-size controller for handheld mode. Are these pro controllers? I already have this. Well, not in Pikachu, but... Buying accessories for billionaire. Okay, we got another uh, cringy by Sir Pens. Oh no, look at this. Okay, definitely not wearing that out. Please don't bend outer layer. Okay, this is from Grace. And a Canadian at that as well. Rich people get so much free shit. Yeah, um, exactly. The truth. I mean, I tell people literally not to get me anything and they do regardless. I literally yell at people for getting expensive stuff. Hannah's... Anna Shafi, small, broke, and kind of dirty. Affirmations for real world. Riz Kid Art. June 17, 2021. These got a bit wrinkled while sealing. My bad. I didn't want to risk sending framed in, in case a glass broke. Also in Canada, so wanted the package light as possible. Some of the art got fudged since I did them at paint. At a paint night fueled with booze, all considered turned out okay. Grace, Ruby Rose is in chat. Any chance at the top of the hour? Oh, dang. Also, I work for a dude that makes beautiful leather belts. I'd like to send you one eventually, but I'd need your actual pants size. XXL isn't enough info for him. Uh, go for anything that ranges from 36 to 40. Okay, we're going to take a look at some of the artwork here. Ice cream Sammy. Badge. I already ran the top of the hour ad break. Awesome. Pass buff. Pass hug. Hustle. Hustle. Come back to the hammer. Beautiful. Thank you. Sorry for the bag, just in case it got wet in the post. Thank you. This was wonderful. Those are for handheld mode. I already have a handheld mode. Yeah, I know. I think another chatter got me those exact. Well, not the Pokemon one, but another one. Okay, moving on. Apparently, a letter in the book. Oh, really?
Hi, Azan. I'll admit sending this book mostly so you can have it around on camera. Do hope you read it, streamer. This is my friend Hannah's second book. Came out last year right in the middle of a lockdown, which really fucked up her release, which sucks because she worked so hard on it. Honestly, love it so much. Even if she wasn't one of my favorite people, I would still love this book. Her art is lovely from her Instagram affirmation series. Much like you, she has tremendous empathy, can be extremely loud, and has a pretty strong political bimbo vibes. Chat, maybe check out her Insta. Maybe go check out her website. Break it. Frizzkidart.com. She's not a chatter, but you probably like her. Says Grace Ruby Roses. Thank you. Uh, and uh, her Instagram is frizz with two Z's, A dot dart. Okay. A gift from Taylor Klein. Enjoy your gift. Pop coat. Rapid dry. Thank you. I talked to, uh, I talked to Simply Nail. And she's down to come on. Uh, and, uh, help me paint my nails. I was supposed to do it at some point this week, but. We'll figure it out. What is this? Amazon basic satin sleep set hair for skin with two pillowcases, eye mask. This dude. You've made my day. Really? I mean, she's dope. What am I supposed to do with this? Chat is literally backseating my sleeping, dude. Thank you. Another Amazon package. Sleep harder. Dream more. What the fuck is this? Florida water? Alone? This is cologne called Florida water. Let's see what the note says. Since you're a crystal himbo now, you need Florida water. No, it's not literally from there to cleanse them and also clearing negative energy from the only Stella that sent him so much stuff he's ungrateful for, Pago. Thank you. Thank you for the Florida water. It's a ritual thing, not real cologne. This is from... It's, it's Royal Mail, delivered by Royal Mail. Don't know who it's from though, doesn't say. Got a thank you note. I hope you love your necklace. Enjoy your gift from Kim. Why is there Why are there little things that like fly out of this everywhere? What the fuck? It's turkey chat. This is sick, thank you. I'm gonna go through as many of these as I possibly can before Will gets here and we have to leave. Okay. Oh, what the fuck is this, dude? Oh, God. Is 
just says supercharged with toxic masculinity. What the fuck? I mean, it's the it's the same as having the incel shirt just twice. You know what I mean? Basically. Now I have a incel shirt and also a supercharged with toxic masculinity shirt. All right, we got another Amazon package here. Let's take a look. This one. Okay. This latex tape will make it easier to paint your fingies, and this top coat is quick dry. Trust me, it'll be worth it. Always use top coat hustle. Taylor Cryptid from Taylor Klein. Thank you. I will be using these with Simply Nail Logical when I do a video with her. Well, not a video, but a stream with her where she teaches me how to paint my nails. Okay. I was also like, yo, tell us about like, you know, your day job and, you know, Canadian murders and stuff. You know, when you come on and she goes, I don't think any one of your fans would be interested. And I was like, you do not know my audience. If that's what you, they will absolutely be interested in that. Right guys. Yeah. Why are you spamming this weird shit? Why are you spamming like the Minecraft and manifesto right now? Oh, is it? Wait, I can't tell if it's bots or if you guys are just spamming it. All right. Oh my God. We got gun holsters. Hey, it's on. Want to make sure you have some assistance with holding frames. So I got you the shoulder holster. Should be compatible with compact and full-size pistols like your Glock Airsoft. Yes, I'm a gun wee banding. From Stitch has a glitch. Thank you, brother. Okay, this one is from Zach. What Zach got me? A shirt. And a letter. Hi, Azan. I've never sent anything to a P.O. box before, and hopefully it just doesn't look like shit. Anyway, I won't give you a long spiel, but you and this community have helped me get through some extreme bouts of loneliness and have given me some really amazing laughs since I started watching six months ago. I appreciate you and everyone in the daycare. I look forward to more shared laughs with you all. I hope the Weeby Cowboy Bebop shirt fits. Come back, Zach, and chat. Thank you, man. Very kind of you. Fucking thick. This is... Oh, I'm going to flex on Will so hard with this, he's going to lose his mind. Thank you. Take a look at these gun holsters now. How the fuck do you wear gun holsters? I don't know if I were right or wrong. Oh, I wore it upside down. I literally don't understand how the fuck 
Isn't this supposed to go on my shoulders? That? Like arms loop. It's the bra? No, it says shoulder gun holster. It's not a bra. You fucking assholes! I mean, this is literally upside down, so it this has to be up this way. I don't know how. Wear it like a backpack? No, this is how you're supposed to do it. I don't know why this is supposed to be upside down, though. I mean, I did it right. Literally, look. Isn't this right? Isn't this right, chat? Like this? I look like an out of work detective. This is 21 Jump Street, literally. I'm Hank Pecker. At your service. I'm fucking Steven Crowder now, boys. Going. Time to debate Sam Cedar. Super Mario 3D All-Stars. Okay, let's see what the note says. Oh, you don't, you tell me you didn't bring it. You did. Hi, Asan. I don't know if someone's sent you this game already, but I think you would like it. A lot even though it's a baby game maybe we could see a gameplay one of these days uh, one of these three possibly from Sean thank you Sean maybe one of these days Sean the Teddy fresh and the gum bra is such a vibe I agree This is what Ethan Klein intended with Teddy Fresh. Like, I'm filling it right now. Okay, this is from Yokai Candy.
Both chains are one piece. Dude, that's not how you spell piece. Doubled, they can be taken apart and attached single style if more length is needed. Watch all your watch your stream all the time. I hope you like laugh. Like slash laugh at my pendant. I made inspired by all himbos everywhere. Yokai candy. Wait, I thought that was a brand. I thought this person was. I didn't realize. This was a... Oh shit. No, it didn't break. There's just like little baby pieces that oh, that are falling out of this bag. Oh, the under underneath the bag, there's a hole. God damn it. And it's like literally little pieces of wood. And now it's going to be stuck on my foot. I'm going to step on it. It's like Lego pieces. I'm gonna, I hope I don't fuck it up. I hope I don't step on him on accident. Okay, let's see what this is. What the fuck? I love this. This is why, like, dumbasses on the internet say that, like, uh, I wear a designer. Okay, because I dress like this. And then motherfuckers would be like, I can't believe Hassan wears designer. What? That was an a that was an asshole. Seen other streamers even open envelopes with glitter? No, that wasn't an asshole. I think they didn't know that it was, like, filling. That's not true. Hill Country Miniatures. Uh-oh. Oh, my God. I, is this what I think it is, chat? Oh, no. Oh, okay. Handcrafted. What the fuck? It's a... It's a... America flag table. I thought it was going to be like Warhammer figurines or something. Hill Country Miniatures by Barbara Hill. Handcrafted, one-to-one -one scale. Country, primitive furniture, fireplaces and accessories. What is that? A fucking... Is that a... Is that a table for my head? Small head memes, dude. Get it? Okay, this is another international envelope. This one is from... I don't know who this is from. They're from... Air Canada again. There's two card decks. What's in here? One card deck. Mr. Hassan envelope. And another card deck. Let's open the Mr. Hassan envelope, okay? Star Quilt Collection. To Hassan, King Khan and Michael Eaton developed these tarot cards for charity. Conable at Conibalism at Tarotrism. Enclosed a gift for you. Black Power Tarot. Dots and feathers 
flash card deck from Decolonize Myself. Oh, this is sick. Will said, log off, bitch, it's time. Is he outside? Did he text me? He didn't even fucking text me. Okay, I'm gonna look at the tarot stuff uh, on stream, okay? We'll do that, like, we'll do a whole thing about it. Um, but I think, I, I don't know if Will is here or not. But if he is here, I gotta go. Because, uh... We're supposed to be going. Yeah, it is Teddy Fresh. Shouts out to Ethan, Ethan for the drip. Please don't change clothes. I'm not. I'm going to wear this. I'm going to take my undershirt off, but I'm going to wear this. Hassan, I hope the tee fits. I'm sending it just because it has an oversized fit, so hopefully it's fine. Thank you for the content and enjoy. Sebastian at We Are Zealots. Fucking sick. Nocturnal animals on it. Got a couple more packages. Okay, this one is from Taylor plus Josh. Sorry for the bad rap job they wrote on the package. What the fuck? Read me. Hey, Hasi Azman Azuni. Thanks for all the time you give to this community, dude. You help me, my partner, and my friends get through this shitty year. You also help me understand my beliefs, try new games, and build my confidence. Parasocial shit like this is super weird, but I don't... I didn't know a better way to thank you for everything. Take care of yourself and keep fighting the good fight. Hustle JP, arms across America in chat. Yes, I know you have a billion shirts, but this has to be the best one I've ever seen. I can't wait for you. I can't wait to see you flex it on stream. Okay. Is there more in here? Nope, that's it. Okay. Take a look. First responder nine. It left. Oh my God. Okay, that shirt is sick. I will 100. I will definitely wear that. What is Will saying? He hasn't texted me. Is he outside? Two minutes out. Okay. Got two more packages that I'm going to open. I think we can finish this P.O. box before Will gets here. Was listening to the Fear and Malding podcast and heard he didn't listen to Dua Lipa's music, which is Paco. So next time your internet goes out, pop the CD into your Blu-ray player from L Nerd. A Dua Lipa CD. Y'all are fucking crazy, dude. I don't even know how I would listen to a CD. Like, I don't know where I would find something to listen to CDs with. Trio Lipa. Okay, this one is from The Hard Times. Oh, th I know what this is. Wow. This oppression, I will not stand for. You see that? They make fun of us, dude. They take our words. Thank you, Hard Times, for sending that or someone. Hey. 
thing. Actually, Will said he's going to be here in two minutes, and I have a whole nother fucking massive bag, I realized. So I'm going to do more of the... Uh, I'm going to do more of the P.O. Box tomorrow, boys. I, I can't... Unfortunately, I won't be able to complete it. I thought that there was less there. You got an old-ass car. We know it can play that CD. You're right. I do have a car with a CD player in it. Oh, my God. Good call. Okay. Anyway, uh, I'm going to hit that three-minute ad break here, the last one of the day. Uh, I love you guys. Uh, I'm sorry that I can't spend more time with you guys currently. Will is knocking on the door right now. Oh, God. He's here. the gun i just got the someone sent me a holster yeah i mean what better way to fucking show your love for america than wear your goddamn glock on your fucking holsters and open carry in a non-open carry state baby you know what i'm talking about you know what i'm talking about no 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 i got hello i got a lot more but we're not gonna do it let's just go no, no, I was wrong. Okay, I'm going to raid someone I've never raided before, okay? Are you guys ready for this? I love you guys. I will see you tomorrow. Have fun, okay? Have fun. Be, allow yourself to have Touch fun. grass, kiss ass, eat a steak. Yeah. Light some fireworks. All right. The best way to show you love this country is by blowing up a piece of it. Woo! He's right. And uh, good night, ladies and gentlemen. Okay.